Check, 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 this is Unique Hustle, it's your boy ECO and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Mr. Mako, what's going on? No, 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 Madeo, what's going on? I want y'all to stop what you're doing right now, go like, subscribe, follow us on all social media platforms, I mean our Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Snapchat, you name it, we're on it. But if you want to see our full-length interviews or any of our great content, good, definitely visuals, you have to hop on over to our YouTube channel, there you'll see all our content, but... If you want exclusive content like we have, let me tell you something you gotta do right now. In each and every of our videos, including this one right here and in the description section, below there's a link that says join our membership. Click that link, join our membership, because y'all see us on the street all the time and be like, how can we support the brand? Should we buy a shirt? What should we do? Subscribe, join, whatever. This is what you can do. Go ahead and sign up for our membership. And we thank you in advance. And we love all the support. Man, listen, man. We got a guy here today, man. This brother right here, man. We down in Atlanta, man. ATL, Shouty, and all yes, that sir. other stuff, man. And this, <laughs> hey, I love it down here, man. My you boy, place, B High, is in the building. What's that? What's that? What's that? Talk to me, man. How y'all doing today? In this man, family, man, thank love you it. so much for coming on the well, show, no, man. When I got the call from E, I knew that that was one of them calls I couldn't play with. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I said, you know what? I'm dropping everything. I'm pulling up, and we're going to chop it up in this thing. Man, man. It, man love it, man. I appreciate yeah. you, man, and all the stuff you do. Thank you. The way that you represent the culture, Thank man, you. is dope. All the people Shame. that you bring through there, man, all the stories that people get to hear yes, is just a, on another level, man. You yeah. know God has blessed you with a gift, man. Thank you. But if you watch Boss Talk, you already know it. Ladies first, man. That's right. Mr. Jamaica about to come in. You see, that's the dynamic of Boss Talk. That's right. One. I know I ain't for to ask you some of the stuff she for <laughs> At all. Yeah. So, Mr. Maker, what's up? So, okay, so were you born and raised here in Atlanta? Yeah, Atlanta, Georgia. What part? West side. West, West side. side, yeah. Okay, what was it like growing up in that area compared oh, West, to any other? Well, the west side of Atlanta, you know, I went to Kyle Heights Elementary, which is in between uh, Bankhead and Adamsville, and I was living in Ben Hill, which is mm -hmm. uh, Camerton Road area, and then I had family on Cascade. Yeah. So it was like pretty much from Cascade to Camerton Road to Bankhead to MLK to Camp Creek, you know, that's where I was pretty much hanging out and growing up. On the west side of Atlanta, man, it's a beautiful side of town. Like I tell folks, you got your hoods, you got your upper scale uh, neighborhoods. You also have... Uh, Civil rights leaders living in the middle of mm. Southwest Atlanta and west side of Atlanta. So with Atlanta, you have doctors, lawyers, gangsters, killers, and everything all in the same area. So you get a little bit of everything growing up in this city. So you'll be in class, you know, some of the people that came up before me, they'd be in class with Andrew Young kids, and they in class with Dr. King kids wow. and stuff like that because all of those people were a part of the city. Mm. Everybody that you know that led the city is pretty right. much hands on in the in city, city. Wow. and from the city. Mm. Wow. Is it predominantly black or? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so, when I was growing up, it was almost, from what I saw, it was like 99.9% .9 black. So wow. it's like, you know, Southwest. That's where the whole uh, pride comes from mm -hmm. because you're seeing all of these successful people that look just like you but also came from the same areas that you came from. And then, you know, with this being the home of the civil rights movement as well, you know we learned all about that through public school <laughs> Which is good, though, because now, a yeah, lot we of schools like it, but all of that schools in stuff. Texas, Which makes they, it don't, they don't teach you about oh, yeah, all now, of you that. You knew everybody no, in the civil no. rights movement and exactly Exactly what they stood for and what it was that they did. That's you got to remember, you know, you got schools like Frederick Douglass. You know, you yeah. got schools like Benjamin E. Mays. That's why I went to high school. Mm -hmm. at. We got uh, Gene Childs Young, which is named after Andrew Young's wife. So a lot of these schools, Langston Hughes High School, these schools are named after, right. you know, civil rights leaders and just black you know, prolific people. So you go to those schools and then it just builds that esteem in you growing up in Atlanta. And then it's just and that being proud and black. Exactly. <laughs> you gonna be black and proud in this city right here. This is the best city for that. That's I mean, it's just too much it. success. You see the struggle, you see the hustle, you see the success, you see the elevation yep, all yep. in one place. And it's on you to choose 
which road you want to go down in Atlanta. It's supposed to come straight out of bank headquarters or Bond Homes that are doctors wow. and lawyers right now. That are some of the biggest artists that you ever met, some of the biggest executives that you ever met, and some of the biggest gangsters that you but ever met. But how is the, the crime time. rate here in Atlanta? Because you know when you know we're grown now, when mm -hmm. you have kids and when you're looking for somewhere to stay, you're like, the first thing you look at is the crime rate. What can my son or my daughter get caught up in? Yeah. Do I have to be like having the reins and making sure that, you know, so what is that like out here? Uh, for me, you know, growing up in the city, you grow up in the thick of it. Mm. And you realize that, you know, either you choose to get into that or you don't. See, that was one of the good things about Atlanta. You could have 10 boys and eight of them are gangsters. And the other two are saying, no, nah, man, I'm cool with y'all. I grew up with y'all. I played ball with y'all. You know, we listen to the same music. But I'm not going to do the gangster stuff along with you. And the other eight will respect that. Okay. So if you choose to be a part of that, that's the lifestyle that you're choosing. It doesn't necessarily, you know, grab you now. However, you know, if you're coming out of a uh, poverty-stricken situation, you might find yourself gravitating towards right. that a lot easier and quicker because you're trying to get some fast money. But for the most part, you know, the crime... It's not that bad. I mean, you ain't going to get... Well, in the hood, the hood is going to be the hood. Okay? <laughs> the hood is going to be the hood. Gonna be if the hood. you're in the hood, somebody going to be breaking into your that's car. Right. You see what I'm saying? Because, you know, that's just what's going right. on. Right. But as far as having to worry about getting shot and killed and all that extra stuff, unless you choose that life, you ain't going to really mm. be So you, you were one of those guys that evidently chose to do stuff the right way. Well... Not yeah. early on. Not early on, you went to school. You went yeah, to college. I know. See, that's the thing about it. You gonna grow up fast too. Oh yeah. So you've seen a lot before yeah. that happened. Exactly. Before so, I even went to college, I already had partners going down the road for life and yeah, all that yeah. in the ground. Even you in high school. Like, yeah, in high school. That was yeah. middle school. You see yeah. what I'm so saying? So you dabbled in the streets. I mean, everybody. If you grow up, that nigga got caught in the crack air. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't in the streets like that, but it's one of those things to where if you're growing up in the hood, the same way a basketball will come into your hand, some drugs are coming to your sure. hand, or guns are coming to your hand, or, you know, ideas to do crazy stuff will come across your face every time. Mm. So, you know, growing up, you might dabble in different things along the way, but after you start to look around and you see folks start to die, or you see folks start going down the road for 20 years, and you say, you know what, this ain't what I want to do. I'm just ready to get out of here. Now, some folks will say, you know what, I'm going to just keep on going down this road and I'm going to see where it takes me. But for me, it was one of those things that I got a lot of, you know, family members that had education and stuff like that. And ed education was pushed heavily in my household. It was like, Let me ask you got to go learn something. When you done that, like, like to be honest with you, like there had to be something in a pivotal moment in in that time period, middle school, high school, where you seen it was crazy and it could have went a total different way and wrong and took you out. Did you ever run into a situation like that? Yeah, yeah, I ran into a situation <laughs> like that. It, it, it was a wild one. I was out there hustling and doing what I did, and I was in school doing it. Wow. And then uh, me and my homeboy were cutting class one day, and we got cornered by the school detective, the principal, and the assistant principal, and the counselor. And they took us, and they was searching us, looking yeah. for everything. And it just so happened that day I decided not to do nothing. I don't know it was mm. God. There you go, there you go. And I said, you know what, I ain't doing nothing today. I'm just going to go to school and kick it today. Wow. But I still ain't in class. I still want to go back. <laughs> <laughs> but I was like, you know what, I ain't going to do this. And then, you know... When that happened, I realized, hey, man, if I would have got caught up that day, my life might have went in a different way. direction. So it was like, you know what? Let me go ahead and switch this up. Then I had another partner, one of my good friends from elementary school all the way up, Mario. He was uh, the witch doctor from the Dungeon family. That okay. was his little brother. Okay. But he was killed when we were 16. Wow. And he was a star football player. I mean, we all love Mario. Mario was going to be going to the NFL. Hell. He was one of the greatest football players that we grew up with during that time. Got like, it was like a real-life Ricky from Boys in the Hood yeah, right, situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when that happened... That changed my whole thought pattern, too. It was like, man, this man was only 16 years old. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And I'm like, so life can change like, like this? That. It's really this serious? And then we had other, you know, that was a close friend of mine. But then, you know, you got other associates and partners that you know that are passing as well. And it starts to turn into a situation to where it's like, you know what, man, it's real out here. You know, we don't need to be... 
wow. you know, play him out here yeah. in these streets. Mm-hmm. But I know earlier you said, well, you know, in your household, education was what was pushed. Was that pushed by your mom and your dad? Did oh, you yeah. Have, so you had both parents in the household growing well, they up? they weren't married. But, but they, they were living they, in they the household were, together. Well, up until I was about six, and then they got a divorce. Okay. But uh, they were divorced, but I still saw my dad, and I was living with my mama. Yeah, yeah. And my okay. my daddy, he was an educated man, and he didn't play about no education. He was mm-hmm. like, you know what? You're going to go get an education. He wasn't real strict about, you know, what the direction was that I should have chosen or something like that. All he knew was... You go get an education. You're going to complete this. Yeah, you, well, you're going to get an education because, see, what people don't understand about an education, it allows you to be able to figure things out that people won't tell you. So mm-hmm. growing up in the hood or growing up in different circumstances, you might not have access to the same information that everybody else has. Wow. How do you even the score and make the odds even? You have to go and educate yourself. The only reason B High TV was able to do what it was doing was through the education. It mm-hmm. wasn't a, that I just kind of stumbled up on and then it worked like that. I was in radio doing what I did and you know I was having more success than the major personalities doing the same thing that I was doing so with that being said it was something there that I knew that they didn't know that allowed me to be able to you know edge them out on the digital side of things and that was the education kicking in so I always tell people I don't care what the hell you got going on you need to go get an education in what it is and then continue to learn for the rest of your life because it's ever changing at the same time but it has to go with the hustle mentality and personality to be able to push it because I know people with education who stuck in whatever they're doing they're, they don't have that drive to excel to anything else because they're so comfortable mm-hmm. and they're very educated and have the highest degrees and stuff like that yeah. but they just you have to have the hustle mentality to be like, I'm going to keep pushing. I'm going to try different things. I'm going to do this, this, this. You're damn and not right. Just- See, it's the trap mentality. Yeah. You bring that over into whatever mm-hmm. it is that you're doing and who's going to beat you. Exactly. You see what I'm saying? Uh, Kobe Bryant said it best. He said, man, when we got to the NBA, I realized that None of the players really wanted to play hard for the simple fact that they were already rich. Wow. So he was like, they already rich. They ain't trying to play hard. They ain't got nothing to prove because they rich. So Kobe was like, well, no, nah, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to just outwork everybody and I'm going to beat them. That's and that's what happened. A lot of times in this game, it's not about, you know, having all of the connections and being the best or the most likely or the most popular and stuff like that. It's about outworking and being there after the most popular, the most liked, and the best quit, <laughs> yep. leave, or get fired, or yep. give up. As yep. long as you show up after that, guess what? You get to absorb their whole fan base because they ain't going to last. Mm-hmm. You got to be able to outlast everybody. That's the difference. At the end of the day, if you got a platform and you try to grow your platform, eventually you'll be the only platform left. Did you do, you was in the, you was teaching as well, right? That's right. That's so right. how did you transition from teaching over into radio? Well, see, I did radio first. Oh, you did radio yeah, first? I did radio and then you got first. Out of and then it. I, well, no, I did radio and I was teaching at oh, the same okay. time. How did you get into the radio? Well, see, I went to Clark Atlanta University. So okay. when I graduated from Mays High here in Atlanta, I was about to go to college. So I ain't applied to nothing but one school. It was Clark Atlanta University. I'm like, mm-hmm. if I don't get in here, it's going to be looking crazy. So I got in there. But I had a teacher named Miss Dupree back when I was at Mays. She was like, you know what? You would be great over there at Clark Atlanta because you got the personality. That's a good school, communications. That's what I was into. Because yeah. I was telling her that's what I was into doing. Yeah. So I already knew in high school that I wanted to do communications. This wasn't nothing that I just kind of stumbled upon. When I was a senior, I said, if I go to school, I'm going to school for communications. Because I always love music and radio and stuff like that. So when I went to Clark, I was over there doing my thing. And then one of my classmates, Ryan Moore, he was a classmate in one of my classes. And when we were being in school, you know, I always had good relationships with my teachers and stuff like that. And my classmates and I just being there just kicking shit every damn every day, damn just day. having a good time. Because yeah. I like to have a good time wherever I go. I'm going to have a good time. So Ryan said, hey, man, you need to bring that personality to the radio station. And I said, man, how you going to get me the radio station? You in class with me right now, fool. But he was already yeah, working as a it. sales assistant yeah, at that time. Yeah. Hence the importance of education again because it puts you around those people. I would have never been around him if I wouldn't have went to school. That's right. Imagine me growing up in Atlanta. I didn't even know where the radio station was at. No. I just heard it on the radio, but I didn't know where it was at. Yeah. So my partner, he said, hey, man, give me your resume. And then I went up there. And when I got up there, I became a volunteer, then I became an intern, and then Mm -hmm. I finally got uh, hired on as a board operator. Mm -hmm. After I got hired on as a board op, 
uh, I was just in that thing working it on out and learning the game as I went. And see, for me, when I came in, I came in off the sweat of my own brow. So yeah. I didn't have no industry connection saying that he the one or we're going to rock with him and we're going to rock, you know, that he's going to be, you know, the next in line. So for me, I kind of had to play the background and buck the system and just keep on trying until I finally got on the air which was overnights, and I was overnight. And how long did it take you to get from first step in the door till that? Okay, uh, I probably got hired in, yeah, no, that was, well, that I got the uh, volunteership probably junior year of college. Okay. So that's two years in college. Then I, I got hired fresh out of college. Then I didn't get on the air. I got hired in like 2015. I didn't get on the air to like 2008. I mean, uh, no, yeah, so I got on. I got. Uh, I graduated in 2005. 2008. So then oh, I got okay. on the air in 2008. So that was probably so good, three years. Yeah, good three to five, five years, years of okay. volunteering and trying yeah. to figure it out before I even got on the air. Yeah. But I say that to say that was five years of fucking around <laughs> before I even got an opportunity to <laughs> yeah. do anything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. now I'm sitting here looking crazy because now I'm thinking to myself, man, what the hell I done signed up for? It ain't that much money going on in this yeah, thing. Yeah. And now I'm trying to, you know, we taught growing up that if you work hard, you're going to get promoted and you're going to get the opportunities. However, it doesn't necessarily go like that with, within the industry. So I just, uh, when I see you, you I, I got to ask you a question about the radio. Like, yeah. like it's so many guys I know in the city and where I'm at in Texas a lot of times, a lot of those guys I interview the radio, they be complaining that the artists do because their music don't get played on the radio. And I just will always try to take the opportunity to get them to understand. So from your perspective, what was it like down here when the local guy was trying to get his music played? See, that was the beauty of Atlanta, man. We, I mean, Atlanta was always on fire. And for me, I became that guy. Mm. So a lot of artists came through me first to get on the radio on Hot 107 like in Atlanta. Uh, you got Rich Homie Quans, 21 Savages, Futures, uh, Alley Boy, Big Crit, uh, the Rich Kids. I mean, so many people, man. I mean, YFN, and Lucci. Wow. You know, these Bankroll Fresh, Dope Boy Raw, uh, Young Greatness. Wow. Uh, Marlo, I mean, so many people, man. I mean, because I was down here working. Yeah, and you, but that's the, I was that, down here that working. roster was talented, but at some point they had to come in the door. And yeah. what you're saying is when they came through the door, you was there to open it a lot of times. Oh, yeah, from no, your I, I, I bust the gate wide open and yeah. I left it open because what happened to me was I realized that I was having an overnight career in radio and it wasn't going nowhere fast. And I felt like maybe my talent was being suppressed or maybe I wasn't getting the opportunity to be as great as I felt like I was. And I was like, okay, instead of getting pissed the fuck off and saying this is some bullshit, I said, how can I transmute this energy into something positive and make a real live impact out here? So I said, you know what? I'm going to use my platform and open up the door for the next generation to be able to get on the radio because they couldn't get on the radio. Yeah, yeah. You had to be hot to get, get on, on the, the radio. radio. Mm -hmm. Wasn't nobody just putting no records on the radio. So for me, I said, you know what? I'm going to just break that whole thing up. You ain't got to be hot to, to be on the radio no more. Just come and holler at me. I'm going to put you. If the song, see, my whole thing is I had a qualification, though. Your music had to be jamming. Don't come bringing me no bullshit trying to get on the radio because, see, now I'm already looking crazy bringing you in here. So then my boss, now I'm playing some bullshit on the radio, then my boss will be like, man, what the fuck are you in there doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So at least give me a hit. So when they hit, they're like, okay, he's doing his job. You know, so a lot of the artists, they was bringing them hits, man. And then I would also say, bring me something that ain't talking about killing nobody. Yeah, yeah, that's We hard. ain't doing that. That's we hard. ain't going to be sitting over here promoting no killing or nothing. Just bring me a damn good song. I'm going to play it on the radio. I'm going to do an interview with you, and I'm going to uh, help you break this thing. Well, I, I said, I, go ahead. Mm -hmm. So the whole time, whenever you were at the, still at the radio station, you were still teaching. How mm -hmm. long into the radio station did you decide that I don't want to teach anymore? I'm just going to do radio. Okay, so now. And why did you leave? Because, you know, when you think about teaching you helping a lot of kids oh, yeah. oh, and no. people that's and stuff a good like story. that both of those kind of coincide with each other at the same time so after i had been doing radio for about 10 years my old professor professor will that actually taught me how to do radio at clark Atlanta, he had left from over there he was like they needed another teacher but 
rewind it back to when I was at Clark Atlanta University, I was thinking about becoming a teacher and majoring in education mm -hmm. other than radio because I was thinking to myself, how likely is it going to be for me to get a job in radio? Now, I had a lot of educators in my family as well. So it was like, hell, I know my auntie is some teachers. I can go over here and teach something and keep the party going and stuff like that. That's, you know, I can see that. But as far as radio, I don't have a real Connect. on a reference for that. Right. But then I was like, nah, fuck that. I'm going to go ahead and chase this radio. So when I started doing radio, as I got deep into my career, that opportunity opened up for my old professor Will asking me to come back and teach. Because mm -hmm. uh, that was always going to be my plan, too. I was going to teach down the line yeah, anyway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So about 10 years in, that's when I started teaching at Clark Atlanta. Teach, uh, and I was over the whole radio department over there. Oh, that's hard. And uh, WSTU, the students over there, I mean, they were awesome. And the students was... It was just great to be able to give them real time information and to help them be able to skip some of the stuff that I failed at along the way. So while teaching over there, I was still doing my show mm -hmm. at Hot 1079, the 10 spot at night. Mm -hmm. So I was breaking records at night and I was uh, interview uh, and I was teaching. teaching by day. And then COVID happened. Mm. And when COVID happened, I had to lose both of those jobs. And that's what but yeah. teaching, you would think you could still go online and teach because everything became virtual at, at COVID for teachers. Well, it was online, but it was still the mandates. Mm. It was the mandates that came across. Yeah. You know, when yeah. they put out the mandates. Yeah, well, you have to, have to, you know, and see, yeah. I don't know what was going on with the companies. If their situations might have been affected during yeah, that time yeah, by yeah. not, you know, implementing the mandates and stuff like that. But all of those situations came down from corporate. It wasn't never a situation where, oh, you out of here, you got to go. It was like, right. hey, man, you going to get, get the jab or not. Yeah, you, you know, going like, to get the shot. Or exactly. So I know I, what it was. Exactly. I've seen yeah. that. I think, you know, you, you know, the one thing I can say, I was in my mind thinking, and I don't know why I thought this way, mm. I was thinking the podcast happened or you was dealing with people and it kind of drove you into the, to, you know what I mean? It's not like COVID just COVID, COVID, yeah, COVID yeah, took it all up I, at the same time, too, because at the radio station, you know, I had been recording a lot of my interviews at the radio that's station. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, I had been doing that the whole time. But then but was you putting it on your YouTube we, channel or was you putting it on there? Was well, it I was always, because I was shooting everything myself. I had my own, same way you got your setup in here. You had I had your my own, own setup, setup okay. coming up there because I was shooting at like 10 o'clock at night. Oh, so you so were it was like nobody your... was even there to even shoot or do my stuff for That's me anyway right. while I was there. So I was like, let me go ahead. I knew in order for me to be successful and do what I needed to do, I was going to have to take matters into my own hands right. yeah. and invest into my own career. You didn't have to depend on nobody else but you. Exactly. But also, you got to think about it. So you have a job as a radio personality mm -hmm. and the resources that I needed to go where my vision was taking me as a personality I knew I needed to put my own money into it. So a lot of the times when I was interviewing folks, I'm paying the cameraman and I'm paying folks to edit everything up myself so I can put this content out here because I'm believing in what it is that I well, was And doing. you was landing it on YouTube. Yeah. But was That's there that smart. conflict, though, with um, the radio station and then you doing your own thing at their radio station? Well, with it being a social media, it was just like any other social media. So mm -hmm. it's like if you're on Instagram and you take a picture of yourself at a radio at a station, station. At, on Instagram, then it's a social media. So it's like with your social medias, you can't really control anybody's social media. Mm -hmm. You can control, you know, flat out business being handled but as far as social media is concerned a but, lot of times mm -hmm. no because i was thinking because you had a show on the radio station for them right oh yeah and then you're having your own show for yourself exactly so to me i'm like it's the same thing but you're doing it for so that's where i'm thinking the conflict would go it's not like you're just taking a picture and putting it on social media but you're doing the same thing you're doing on the show for them you're doing it also for yourself but it's late if night. you have a employee, but you're using their spot if you have an employee that's working for you and they don't have the resources to execute the job. Well, really, you don't, you're not even paying them to do that job. Mm. You're okay. paying them to do a specific job. Right. But they decide to go over and beyond for themselves and the company to and the company. market and promote what's going on. I don't think you're going to stop them from doing that. I tell people all the time Got because it. of the the world that we live in today, a lot of the radio personalities is personal friends of mine, and mm -hmm. I'll be like, "Bro, there's no reason why you shouldn't have a brand." And I don't know if I'm being, I'm like, I don't know if they, I don't know what stops them. I don't know that same thing you're doing. Mm -hmm. I have spoke to different guys and be like, "Man, it's a world out here. It's a world out here that that basically you got to think about 
that's pretty much open and access for you on social media and on these platforms where you can have content and mm -hmm. be successful and still do that. But I don't know how hard that is. You got to have it in you, bro. Well, for me, what happened was when COVID hit the radio station, we couldn't bring guests into the station no more. Mm. So okay. that's when I had to create high time media. Okay. okay. Got it. So got it was it. like, okay, COVID is here. So now it's time for me to, I have to keep this party going. So that's when I went and purchased my situation where I'm at. Well, I've been shooting for the like the last four years. So then now I'm working, doing my own business. But what I would do, I would take the content that I was creating in my business and I was bringing that back to the radio station. Oh, okay. okay. So in one it. hand, watch the other. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Like, you I want, so now I'm paying uh, for a full office production team, editing crew, <laughs> doing what I need to do for Be High TV. And then after I finish recording that interview, I say, okay, I got a show on Hot 107.9. I'm going to run some of my interview on Hot 107.9 as well. They still, because, they love you over there still. <laughs> I love them. It was the greatest job of all time. That's what I'm saying. They it was the you. greatest job of all time. If it wasn't for COVID, well, you know, I battled between both of them. Being a professor, I love that just, I love that probably a little bit more than radio because I love to talk and teach at the same right. time. Right, and you're helping people. Exactly, and you're helping folks and you get to see folks discover shit about themselves that they didn't even know they no. had in them. Or you get a chance to give a nigga some direction that they didn't even know that they needed and then when they implement it, they're like, hey man, I didn't even know that it worked like this, appreciate you, I'm off to the races. Yeah. So, being at Hot 107.9 and growing up in there, man, I had the time of my damn life working over there with some of the best people that you will ever come across in radio. I was in there with legends, some of the folks that just really put it down for the town. So I was able to absorb all of the information that they was giving me along the way wow. and then implement the education that I had been getting as well. Because after I finished at Clark, I went and got another degree in uh, strategic communication with Troy and a full sail degree for uh, creative writing and stuff like that. And all of that information I implement into the YouTube right now to this day. It was not a case of when you got some education and you couldn't apply this mm -hmm. shit. It was like, no, nah, we're going to apply this stuff in real time uh -huh. and we're going to show folks how to do this thing and share the information where we could. And then I take that same information and I was teaching that at the school at wow. the same time too so that the uh, kids could get their stuff up and running yeah. and go out there and crank it That's up at big. the same time. But the whole thing is, it's about finding ways to create pathways for yourself and others that ain't hurting nobody. Man. Okay, You see what I'm saying? That's I wasn't huge. trying to hurt nobody. I was just trying to make it do what it was supposed to do in a seamless way when using the path of least resistance. You right. see what I'm saying? I want to talk about the podcast, man. Like, mm -hmm. behind, man, like I said, you do a great job. Thank and, you. Uh, I mean, the things that got me in tune, which it was Pimpin' Ken, mm -hmm. was Bun B, yeah. and uh, who, oh, KL, KLC. Yeah, that's KL, my boy, man. Yeah. Like, I rock yeah. with them, them my, hey, that's the three trifles right. right there. That's right. Get a nigga on over there. <laughs> you know, I'm a, ignore this nigga. Then, nah, I can't ignore this. This nigga, all right, huh? Exactly. Me, you know, I'm just showing you how you, yeah. when you go in, but I just love the fact, and, and then, like I said, Crunchy Black, that nigga cried. Yeah. I ain't never seen nobody get that sentimental on there. I'm yeah. like, man, now, how, how did you, end up and that's an interview that sticks out to me like to keep your composure and to keep that going I know you didn't see it coming out like mm -hmm. that you know how did you keep and maintain you know your your position well I felt this pain wow. that was just the bottom line I felt this pain now hell I wanted to cry with the nigga <laughs> Real you know what I'm saying? Like, Real no, time. man, I feel yeah. your pain. Yeah, yeah. my eye might have got a little twitchy. Yeah, you might have got one or two eyes. You see what I'm yeah. saying? So it's like, it hurt, but then for the camera get back on me. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, I felt this pain because, I mean, you come up with somebody, you grow up with somebody like that, it hurts yeah. when they pass, you know? And then, you know, to compound that with the loss of his daughter and everything else at the same time, and just the pain from life in general mm. yeah. is enough to make you, you know, go there at that yeah. time. So, you know, Crunchy, and then Crunchy know our family, man. So, you know, I got love for Crunchy. He got love for me, man. And I, he knows that I'm not there to, you know, exploit him in any kind yeah, of way or nothing yeah. like that. He knows that I genuinely give a damn about what's going, what's going on. on. And uh, when that happened, I mean, I just felt this pain. And wow. that, that was the main thing with that. It was like, you know what, let him get it out and let him talk about it. Because at the end of the day, hell, Therapy. niggas get together all the time and yep, folks yep. cut a fool. You see what I'm saying? Yep. Well, we screaming, yelling, acting up. Come on, just so happened that the camera was on that day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? You yeah. got to sit right there and let somebody cut up. And then you come back in with what you got to say to keep them going. Well, you know, and, and another thing, you know, like I said, that was one of the ones that stuck out. 
uh, that wicked guy over there with you. Yes, sir. Yeah, always arguing and talking yeah. crazy and yeah. saying <laughs> some stuff that I be getting upset about. Yeah. The eight ball and <laughs> yeah, UGK. Yeah. Don't play with UGK. I'm real crazy yeah. about this stuff. But I, I love the chemistry because it seems as if you, you know, y'all are well balanced. You yeah. know what I mean? Y'all rock out together in a way to where it makes sense. You yeah. know what I mean? But I, And then y'all captured subjects that's happening. I, I be watching all that. Yeah. I be loving the fact that, you know, you get I, I look at yours and I be like, dang. Okay, he went in on that. Yeah, or yeah. stuff that, you know, so you got, how did you and Wiki get so cool? Okay, see, Wick, he was one of the artists. So when I was at Hot 1079, okay. not only was I breaking new artists, but I was also bringing the artists that I grew up listening to to the radio station as well. Mm -hmm. Because how it used to happen at the radio back during that time, it was one of those things to where if you, were, if you weren't hot, then you had to go to hell. Okay. And that's just what it was. You have your three, four year run, and then after that, nobody want to hear from your mm -hmm, ass again. Mm -hmm. And that's just how hip hop was going at that time. So for me coming into the game, I saw that and I was like, nah, that ain't going to work. Hell, these folks still got the same fan base. Just because their song ain't playing on the radio don't mean they ain't still hot. That's real. Right. You see what I'm saying? They still got a story mm -hmm. to that's tell. That's real. And they, got a, they got a fan base. Them. They got a fan base. And as well. they got a fan yeah. base. So. Wick was one of those folks, you know, Ghetto Mafia, I bring them in there, you know, we'll go into that straight from the deck and stuff like that, and uh, as well as Turk, too. And yeah, I've seen Turk on there a lot. Yeah, yeah, now Turk, another one of my podcast partners. So with Wick, he, uh, when it was during COVID, and I was getting ready to get that office, so that's when the game changed from the podcast, mm. and this is when I realized that, okay, if I'm going to make this a business now, I have to make sure that I can always create content. content. Okay? So you're going to have to have some podcast partners, okay, that you fucking with on a regular basis that you could talk to and mm -hmm. create content with. And you're also going to have to have some topics to be able to talk about. That's right. And, you know, argue on the show just to have a damn show going that's on right. at the that's same right. time, too. So that's when my main concept then became hip hop debates. So what I wanted to do and bring to the game was that. No longer would you have to just sit there and interview somebody to have content. We could talk about the culture and debate yep, the yep, culture, yep. whether it's old, past, present, or future, and we could have a uh, you know uh, inspiring com uh, conversation doing that. So with Wick, we started debating Eight Ball and MJG. I know. And UGK. That's that was problem. one of our first debates. I know. That's a yeah. problem. Yeah. yeah. yeah, that, that, yeah. With me, yeah. that becomes an issue real fast. And yeah, I, love a -ball. I love A-Ball. I love A-Ball. I don't get it twisted. Oh, yeah. Now, I'm a big... I, you, it's going to be hard to get around A-Ball and MJG and them beats and the, they produce right. and all that. That's so, right. But there's a difference. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I know I'm from Texas. So you can you from Atlanta, yeah, so you yeah, can really yeah, you they yeah, Memphis and yeah. but they you know Tony Draper was they was in Texas they was yeah, in Houston yeah, yeah you know so that was a lot of influence yeah that's yeah. all I'm saying don't give my guy the edge <laughs> <laughs> the influence is, is something in itself I mean a ball and MJG Dope. UGK Outkast yeah three six Mafia and Goody Mob those Ooh. are my groups from that time. <laughs> That's hard. Those are my groups from that time, and we can argue about them however you want to do it. But you every said time. Now, now go back. You said Eight Ball and MJG, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and Eight Ball and MJG had a problem with Mister Mike when he was there. But that nigga was serious. I'm just gonna go and tell you right yeah. now. You can say yeah. that. You yeah. can say whatever. But I go get the the tapes. <laughs> you can go get the CDs and the tapes, nigga. Yeah. And I'm gonna promise yeah. you. You're not going to ignore Mr. Mike That's in South right. Circle. That's right. But Mr. That's Mike right. himself, that tonality and all that he was doing in the I mix agree. to that, I agree. you can't leave him out. Come and on. I, and then when I went and interviewed, it was like, I can't leave you out, bro. I love you, bro, exactly. because of your voice and the way your tone is and the way you was delivering exactly. those, those, those rhymes. Nobody wasn't doing it like him Facts. during that time. Facts. Believe me, Facts. how you going to be pinnacle in the Mr. 8-Ball and MJG? I mean, Big Mike. Yeah. That, Big he, Mike. That's another that's Mike. A, that's an argument right saying, there, man. man. He, got, he gonna jam with uh, UGK and A-Ball MJG. Man, what you talking about? Big Mike is another bad Mike, Mike in hard. this thing. Man, let me tell you, so I always compare that some serious to yeah. back when you got realize that was the nineties, early nineties. Yeah. Chronic came out, yeah. And I say you niggas don't talk about some serious, and I got a problem with that. <laughs> you, you can't not talk about some serious because I had both of them in exactly. the car, in that in that Monte Carlo, Come all, on that, now. all that Cutlass, yeah, with the three hundred five. I exactly. had all that going on, yeah. And I might pick 
the chronic, or I might pick <laughs> something serious. Come on. Am I right? Exactly. exactly. <laughs> but, but you don't hear that. You don't hear that kind of talk. You don't, that don't, from the East and the West Coast, I don't think they've seen it the way we've seen it. And, yeah. and, and, I, and I, res, I get it, but I got to be true to myself when it comes down to these Southern artists. That's something that I push on this channel. Exactly. Like, I'm not going to be biased. I'm going to do, I'm going to live my truth. Yeah. My truth is I was here and I'm exactly. an older nigga. So exactly. I was listening to it. I was consuming it. You Come know on. what I'm saying? Come so on. I know what I was consuming and how I was consuming exactly. it. Exactly. You talk, you talk about Mr. Mike. Let's go to another one. You got Magic Mike. Yeah. Stop playing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The bass. So Come the on. Bass, yeah. so that bass. That yeah. bass. Yeah. I had 18s yeah. in the truck. Yeah, come so on. You can't, it's all kind of stuff going on in my car come that on. tell me what to say on <laughs> exactly. this podcast. You know exactly. what I'm saying? And you're not going to come in here and say, I don't care who you is and tell me different. Exactly. I know because I lived it. That's you know right. what I'm saying? That's so right. when I hear your show, I really understand that you guys are standing on business when it comes down to what you guys truly believed in. And, and also, I think that's what we need, bro. Also, it's creating a relevancy in the game. Come on now. So the whole thing is we trying to open up the doors and create a relevancy for OGs to be able to attack the game like they used to yeah. instead of being booted out the game and having to sit on the sidelines and watch the young folks have the time of their life. We said, no. Nah. Because, see, this was the thing for me, E. When I was at Hot 107.9, one of the things that I did know was that I was a young man at the time. And I knew that I was growing up inside that station. Yeah. And I was looking forward towards my future in radio or just in the industry in general. And what I saw was that, damn, after I turned a certain age, they're going to try to boot me out the game and start saying, I'm old. I can't do this. I can't do that. So I said, before I hit that certain age, let me make it cool to be old. Yeah. So that when I hit that age, I could just ride right on into That's it. Right. And don't nobody even realize nothing and change. I done made the bed for myself to be able to be 40 years old talking about hip hop yeah. and making money off of yeah. it. Yeah. You see what I'm yeah. saying? And that's what my mind was at. I was like, man, I got to create the place for me to be able to thrive in the future because I want to be able to continue to do this forever. That's I don't want to have to go home at a certain age and they say, I done aged out the demographic. Mm. No, it's a bunch of content out here that needs to be discussed. It's a lot of people out here that need to be uh, saluted. It's a lot of stuff that needs to be covered and talked about and discussed at the same time. So it was like, you know what? Let's put the smack down and go out here and create this conversation for OGs to have a safe place to discuss what's going on out here in this world, unbiased and with a real live opinion at the same time, too. Let me ask you something about uh, Turk. You, you mentioned him earlier, yeah. one of the original hot boys. That's like, right. um, it's a touchy situation. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, well, I remember his uh, interview on uh, uh, Drink Tales. Yeah, yeah. And he get the drinking and stuff start to come out. Yeah. And, that, and then some of the stuff come out, you know, you start hearing all, he go viral. Yeah. Stupid viral. Every time. But then at the end of the day, if when you look at like Birdman and all them, and I remember one thing he was saying, he wasn't going on the tour with him if they did a reunion mm -hmm. tour. Like, how complicated is that to get a, because you are, you are true, uh, Consume other music as well, but mm -hmm. you also have relationships throughout. That's right. Like so, how do you how do you have those conversations? Or do y'all even bring up the whole cash money, you know, uh, uh, saga with, on on the show? With those things, we'll talk about what's going on, but we always gonna talk about it from a positive standpoint. There you go. There you go. You see what I'm saying? We're not about to do nothing that's gonna fuel any flames and you know add some BS to the game. We're going to try to do it to clean it up, to make it a better situation there you for go. everybody. And to keep it on the up and up, we don't say nothing that, you know, somebody will go home and feel some type of way about. Yeah. It's more so, you know what, we're going to get clarity in any situation. But other than that, you know, we just having a good time and talking about different things, but we don't never really get into the depths of, because I don't even, it ain't my business. You see what I'm saying? Like, ain't, ain't nobody asking me to go on goddamn tour. You see what I'm saying? So I'm like, this shit ain't got nothing to do with me in the goddamn way. I ain't getting y'all nigga business. I'll talk to you about what the hell you want to talk about, sir. But that ain't none of my damn business. That ain't to do with me. You I see what I'm saying? Yeah. I respect everybody and nigga, we gonna do what we do. We gonna talk hip hop, we gonna talk about your music, what you working on, what you got coming up next, because that boy got the gift of gab too. That oh yeah, talk, for sure. talk. You yeah, see what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What folks done had to realize throughout it all is that 
Turk is a personality. Yeah. Wig is a personality. You got a lot of artists out here that have personalities as well. that are great. So it's like, you know what? We ain't got to talk about the stress and the drama and everything else. We can talk about what's on your mind. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. You see yeah. what I'm saying? So that's where we be at with a lot of that stuff. But as far as that uh, whole cash money saga, I mean, it ain't nothing but a bunch of brothers over there, Niggas. man. Them boys made millions of dollars together, sold them. millions of records together, man. They gonna be together forever. Yeah, but and it you ain't gonna, gonna, gonna be a damn it. fool to think that these boys ain't gonna get back together when they didn't made that kind of history together. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like I was telling Turk, I said, you know what? It's only one reunion that can rival the Outcast reunion, and I said that's the Hot Boy reunion. That's I said it's the only thing I can see that can rival. Big Boy and Andre getting together and shutting some shit down. And we were able to get that from Outcast Outlast, which they show, sold out that park right there yeah. three, days, three in days, days in a row. In five minutes, though. In five minutes, though. Woo. You see what I'm saying? So I can only imagine what the Hot Boys about to do when they come back together. Wow, I'm going to be happy to see it, to be honest it's with you. BG home. So with BG coming yeah. home, he, he been in Vegas, you know, but at yeah. the end of the day, he is home and he is talking that talk come again. Come on, man. So you can't, you can't deny the fact that they here. And, and I feel like. I feel like they could get back together and make some more music. And we gonna I always, feel like they could be the OG. Feel like that. So, I, but see, I'm gonna put it like this. See, Killer Mike just really fucked it all the way. He up. did, didn't he? Okay. Yeah. He said, "Okay, I'm about to be an OG. I'm about to come here, sweep the Grammys on y'all ass, and show y'all that I That's still real. got it, and that I'm still relevant, and I can still be the best of the best." That's so all. So with that right. being said, now hip hop essentially has went from a young man sport to a grown man sport again. Wow. It's open for everybody to be able to have access I to like what's that. going on. So you think that if you get Wayne, Juvie, Turk, and BG on a record with a Manny Fresh track, it ain't about to go the fuck down? You a damn fool. You a damn fool if you don't want to Come on, that. man. Man, listen. Come on. I'm going to tell you, man. Them boys, man, they they hit different, man. Yeah. And I'm going to be real with you. I'm, I'm going to say this, and, and you're going to feel me on this, Talk man. To me. They had forgot about Scarface and that tiny dish. Oh. Yo, yo. <laughs> Yeah, stop playing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they call yeah. themselves trying to sidestep my boy. Yeah, but that yeah. little old time yeah. just told him, nah, nah, nigga, y'all can't leave this nigga. Scott, exactly. <laughs> Scott is one of those ones, man. And that's the whole thing. What people got to understand, like even right now, though, with hip hop, this conversation has to be had as well because we lost a whole generation. Yeah. That whole 2010 generation mm -hmm. that came up that was supposed to be carrying the mountain right now, a lot of them went to jail or flat out passed, passed away. away. Yeah. Okay? yeah. And I'm yeah. talking about when I go through my catalog of people I didn't interview, I, I might need a third hand Man. to count all of the people that are no longer here with That's us. That's right. That's you right. see what I'm saying? Right. So in order to keep the culture alive, the OGs have to take back the mantle mm. and continue to create this thing called hip hop yep. and show the young folks how to be able to coexist in this thing mm -hmm. and continue to keep the culture going and keep the money flowing at the same time. And that's another one of the things that we got to do. It's got to be all hands on deck with folks really coming in and working together. But Mike just showed that OGs are still viable out here in the marketplace. The they can sell it. records, they can do numbers, they can sell out concerts, and they can also make some of the best music that you're going to hear this year. And it was gangster. He got Come arrested in the, at the, in the same uh, breath. Nigga. Exactly. It's Killer Mike. Come nigga. on, man. Yeah, anything can happen. Come on. OG, listen, man, but, but the things that he says and the way that he delivers his message is impactful enough to change people. Come and on. I, and that's... It, 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 Within the music, to be Come honest on. with you. So that's what's dope about Killer Mike, exactly. to be honest with and you. And it goes back to that Atlanta stuff I was talking about earlier. Killer Mike and Shawty Lowe Come went on, to the man. same high school. Really? From the same areas. You see what I'm saying? So this is what you got. The same kind of people. You got all kinds of people coming out of this one area, but they all understand each other extremely well because they came up in the sandbox together. Wow. You know Bun B and you, y'all think y'all slick, but y'all <laughs> not. Because y'all think y'all professors, y'all oh, come no, out with no, man, oh, they get together and, and I'm looking at them like, these niggas think they smart. No, they professing it up over there. I didn't realize until you came here now that, that you're teaching like this. No. I'm running wild because I'm saying, I can't get no liberty. How come he don't come hang out with me? He over there two, three, four, five times. <laughs> no, the boy, man, I mean, that was one of those damn interviews I was waiting on, E. Okay, because really? I was a fan of Bun B. Me Bun too. B is really, you know, he might be my favorite rapper of all time. I'm an Andre 3000 guy too, but the Bun, the Bun, shit that that man. nigga said was just too damn real, man. Oh, yeah, yeah. Bun is, it was he just is too that guy. Real. I'm gonna be honest. I told him, man, during that 
during that whole versus, man, I couldn't think about number PMC because Come he wore the shirt. It seemed like we were going back into this whole exactly. situation again. So I couldn't even look at it as no versus. Exactly. I was looking at it as a, a pivotal moment to honor PMC again. Exactly. <laughs> and, that, and that was part of the reason why me and Wick was doing a debate about 8 Bottle, MJG, and UGK was to push for that versus. And which makes sense. You see what I'm yep. saying? It was like, no, we got to let these folks know that our legends need to be doing some verses out here too. That's real. Because we love their music. And we'll show y'all just by doing a debate by them how many numbers it do, how the comments go crazy, and it lets you know that, oh, man, these OGs right here, they the damn truth. And they still got millions of fans That's out right. here ready to show up and show, show up for them at the drop of a hat. Man, I mean, I seen you, you went, once I, I brought, I shout out to Bobo, I brought him yeah, out. Yeah. That went, Bobo. Once, he, once he came through, um, I remember he told me he was coming up here to see you when he was yeah. coming to that versus and all that stuff. Sure I was supposed to be with him, you know, the nigga oh. didn't want, nigga slid me, but oh, I, I, cause, oh. cause I, I wasn't the original UGK, you know, yeah. I wasn't on, I wasn't, I wasn't with him when he was shooting in the gym. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but, but we became friends after that interview I did with him and mm -hmm. you, that interview came from you and uh, Bun, you know that, mm. like because when y'all said Steve Below. Yeah. I went and got Steve Below, ah. and that was y'all. I didn't put a clip of it on uh, on my video, Come and then on. when you and Bud said that, and then I went and got him. So I was walking in the mall one day, and Steve called me and said, "You want to interview Bobo?" I said, "Who the hell is Bobo?" Yeah, yeah. He yeah. said, "Bobo, my my man Bobo just lost baby." That's all you got to say. Is I said, "What? What yeah. is that?" You know? <laughs> <laughs> I said, where this nigga at? Yeah. He said, man, yeah. uh, uh, he he want to he wanna jump on there. I said, man, tell that nigga to come see me. Give exactly. him my number. Exactly. And then that's how it happened. And that was one of the most pivotal moment, moments for my podcast is dealing with him and then come him, on. you know, super tight and all that and him interviewing with you and going over to real life and all that stemmed yeah. after we had sat down. Exactly. And I thought that was dope and Bobo been killing it ever since. Come you know on, what, what up, saying? though, Bobo? And super I think, tight. Super tight. And I always, you know, I always, I look at all these pivotal moments in yeah. Boss Talk 101's yeah. uh, set up, you know, there's a lot of things happening. I can't say like you, I dealt with positivity at, at all the time. I dealt with a lot of stuff yeah. because life ain't just gonna hand me positivity. That's true. So That's I have true. to cope with everything. I've been through the trenches. Yeah. So a lot of that stuff is energy coming back to me because yeah. of the stuff I already was challenged with. Come so on. God know what you can handle. Come on. So he send you certain things. That's how you see a fallout with the OGs and Charleston White and yeah. all this stuff because I'm a nigga that come from a different yeah. place. Yeah. But you'll see a lot of people on mine that you might not never even see do an interview. Yeah. So I'm on there talking to people just because I'm trying to be therapeutic in one's life a lot of times. Because exactly. my ministry strives in Boss Talk 101. On. So I think a lot of times people be getting it twisted. Be like, he talk too much. He cut them out. Yeah, nigga. Because yeah. it's like, for me, it's a conversation of give and take. Yeah. And it ain't just about just doing a traditional interview with That's me. Right. I ain't gonna lie to you. A lot of my interviews, I don't know what's gonna happen. And but I do know in the midst of that interview in an hour we're gonna talk about God a little bit, and so I feel like I done got my kudos off once yeah, I do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When it comes to this interviewing thing, e, you just sometimes you gotta let these folks talk simply because they might say they might say something that might change the game. That's right. And I mean. when folks are following along, watching the interview to for that artist or whoever they talking to, they want to make sure. That they get every because you might have asked a good ass fucking question. Oh, before, I know. And, but before the nigga can answer it good as he can, you done asked another. I done got crazy with. So it. that's the whole. Got that's super excited. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's the whole thing. Is what I, I had to learn that too. Yeah. When it come to these interviews, it's about tempo and pace. Yeah. So yeah. it's like you know you kind of see who the hell you talking to and you see they talking, they tempo or how the hell they talking or how they mm -hmm. answering your questions and you try to mimic that and keep the conversation flowing from that level. You see what, what I'm you saying? saying? that Have anybody came in and the energy just be off? Hell yeah. <laughs> I had a nigga come in my place one time he was mad as hell. And I was like, why is this nigga mad as hell? We didn't what know. did you do? Nobody did nothing to him. He just walked in the room mad as hell. <laughs> no, but how did you, conduct, you, how did you conduct that interview? Uh, well, okay, I had this happen twice, actually. The first time, but I had a few questions lined up. I had my list of questions that I'm going to ask. And then whatever I'm going to probe you with. So the nigga came in there angry as hell. I had went through my list of questions. By the time I got to the last one, the nigga had opened up. But then ain't that's the way it be. I'm like, nigga, I'm at the last question. Now you ain't got you nothing to ask your angry ass. 
Then the other nigga, he came in mad and said, oh, but um, I just ignored that shit and said, nigga, we about to talk, nigga. I don't give a damn. And he opened up about five minutes into it or whatever. But sometimes, you know, folks be having real life stuff going on right. when they walk in the room. That's right. That's you see right. what I'm saying? So I don't never take it personally. No. Because, I mean, somebody might have just really pissed them the hell off mm-hmm. when they walked off in that thing. Yeah, or whenever you ask them the questions, they just so short with it, they just answer it like this. Exactly. And you're like... <laughs> Exactly. They do that sometimes too. <laughs> yeah, but see, everybody ain't a personality. Uh-uh. Right. You see uh-uh. what I'm saying? Every person that you interview ain't a personality, uh-uh. so they might not have that much to say. They might be a man or a woman with a few words. Yeah. And that's just what it is. So how do you deal with that when they, when the interviewer is not doing what you would want them to do? Do you you try to? How do you compliment that? Uh, normally, I can break somebody out of their bullshit. By just continuing the conversation if they ain't really trying to talk. Yeah. But to be honest with you, the way I feel now, nah, nigga, you come here with that bullshit, you get the hell on, nigga. I ain't got time for this shit. I ain't asking you to come in this motherfucker, nigga. Go on, nigga. I ain't got time for it. You ain't about to come in here and be on some bullshit with me, nigga. I ain't got time for that shit. Or do you have the ones who are stuck up? Uh, no, nah, I don't really get that too tough. I ain't had nobody that was. Or pre Madonna? No, no, I don't get a lot of divas coming in. I, you know, I don't get that. I, yeah, the, yeah. the only time I might have felt that way might have been through a Zoom or something, but okay. in person, yeah, yeah. niggas don't niggas really don't give play me that like kind that. of energy in person yeah, because yeah. I ain't... You know, we're not about to do that. Right. You see what yeah. I'm saying? Because I'm right. the type of nigga, we can end this shit and go on, but I'm business, nigga. I don't need this shit. Well, it ain't that, it, it ain't that, that serious. It ain't, that, it ain't never that serious. serious. No. Nah. Nah. I'm going to go and lay down and let somebody abuse me nah. because I want to be down. I'm not nigga, doing hell, it. no. I'm not doing no, it. No, uh, no, nigga. Wait. I'm here doing my job, bro. If you down with playing your part, we're going to make movies. But if you ain't, nigga, you go to hell. Y'all really? Just like you said that, um... What did you think about? Wasn't it a funny Marco interview where um, he? It was funny Marco, right? The Which one? one? Well, G Herbo. Oh yeah, that was a crazy interview. Interview, probably, remember that? Yeah, they, interview? yeah. But how but, did you but, feel being a podcaster got, and seeing that? Go ahead. Well, they said that it was fake. That's what I said. They I was about to say fake. that. So a lot of times, you know, Funny Marco play games on that yeah, internet. Yeah, they, they said it was fake. You know, hey. But at first, when you saw it, you didn't know. So what was your well, view? I, I don't buy it. I don't. I don't buy nothing out here. That internet. <laughs> I don't buy nothing out here. I don't buy nothing out here, nigga. I got to see it ten times. <laughs> I'm gonna let it. I'm gonna let it ride. I got to see. I need ten sources. We got to triangulate this thing before I come with a conclusion or open up my mouth on anything. That's going on. So when I saw that, I was like, "Nah, that, it's something that, to that, that. Be real, because at the end of the day, if you're carrying on like that, it's gonna be more of that going right. on. Right, and you and sitting down and your taking ass it. Booked at every damn part. Well, we ain't doing that shit. Yeah, right. and you'll see that activity build up within those individuals as well yeah. that's doing interviews. You'd have heard talk about them. I, and I won't say names, but it's certain people I know that I would never interview because of stuff they already been doing. Mm-hmm. I ain't even met them. But I know I don't want to be there in that energy because yeah. I know I've seen them do things that's not really something I want to deal with because we're going to tear these cameras up. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? But sometimes, but like I tell you. Because <laughs> no. that's the whole thing, man. You can't be just trying for the folks trying to show you some love, man. Then you got to see the other side. That's right. Now you done seen the other side and now everybody looking crazy. <laughs> Man, we all look crazy. But sometimes, all, but sometimes do, do you not notice that sometimes they do certain things on some people's platform, but when they come around you, they're not so hyper and so they're everything so because it just depends on how you conduct the interview. Well, you know, I'm going to just be real. Some folks already have relationships with different people, so they happy to see the person that That's they talk right. to. That's you see right. what I'm saying? Some folks are fans of the people that they are interviewing with, so they're going to have a great conversation with them. Some folks is like, I'm just here because my manager told me to come in here. Mm-hmm. Nigga, I didn't want to talk to your ass. Yeah. So, nigga, I can't get mad at them folks either. Nigga, if you just doing your job, we going to help you do your job. You're going about your damn business. Right. Wow. You see what I'm saying? But I don't get mad at nobody. Ever. You come on boss talking, you in here having a time. Mitchell, man, y'all niggas crazy. That's the time I got shot 20 times. I don't want to And then you come on my show like, right. yeah, nigga. Nah. I, I ain't going to care. I ain't going to care. I'm going to let you live. It just means that you got a better, you know, she got a better relationship, better relationship. With than they got with me. It That's just real. Is what it is. I can't make nobody love me. That's and true. I don't give a damn. If you do, you don't. Oh, you don't, man. I want to ask you about those. Uh, you know, you you know you got a platform. You know you're getting all these views. You know people looking at you. Mm-hmm. When it comes down to the political, you know, different people who's running into politics, have they reached out to you, try to get you to 
you kind of endorse them. Have anybody showed up trying to take pictures and stuff with you? We had an incident. I'm not going to say when, but yeah. a nigga showed up and started taking pictures with us, following us around, yeah. trying to campaign through us. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's 2024 going to be my year, man. Yeah. Let's do this. Yeah. Like, how do you handle that? Or have you had those incidents where people try to push the political, you know, engagement through you? Well, I, I don't blame anybody as long as they try to push something positive. You see yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? If yeah. they ain't trying to use and abuse the people, you know, as long as you try to push something positive, I'll be there to support it every time. Yeah, you see yeah. what I'm saying? Uh, let me see. My girl Angela Stanton, she's working on the Robert F. Kennedy Jr. campaign. So she didn't got a bunch of trio folks together okay, to okay. have conversations with him about the community and what's going on out here. Uh, me and Turk, we pulled up on him. A drummer boy, Rick, he was in the building as well. We all had a lunch in downtown at a uh, high rise job was in there. And I mean, we just told him about what we thought about what wow. was going on in the country, in Atlanta, you know, the things that we need to see change and the things that we would like for him to do as far as moving the culture forward and helping right. us out. And he was all ears. I mean, it was a great conversation. I mean, it wasn't a flat out endorsement, but we went over there to have a conversation with somebody. See, that's the other part, too. You ain't got to endorse everybody, but you do need to talk to everybody. That's, right. that's real, that's real. It don't matter who the fuck in the office. You can't just say, okay, so-and-so in the office, we ain't going to talk to them, and we need this over here in our community. If they yeah. got the ability to be able to push something into your community to make it better, then you need to be able to let your voice be heard so you can articulate what it is that needs to be going on in the community and getting those resources to the kids, the women, the men, and the, and the businesses in the but community. See, but what, what I what don't they, like about the politics is that when you sit down and you voice all of that, but when you months later on or even a year later on, nothing happens. Well, that's when you got to put the people to the fire. You have to show up. You got to continue to camp. We have to campaign our issues the same way that everybody else campaigns their issues. And then also, you know, you got lobbyists out here. We need lobbyists that really move the money around for our community and our businesses and our agendas and stuff like but, that, too. We can't just be saying what we're going to do. We got to put some money up, too. But one thing about it, I can say when I first asked that question, your picture, your being in that building, your, you having that person on your show, a lot of people that follow you just because of the conversations and the places you go mm -hmm. are going to look at that person and think, Man, be high like them. They must not be b bad yeah, people. Yeah. So that's the part what I was talking about. Like when you yeah. start being the around, they're gonna they're gonna think you They think, you're think you endorse them, them you know even what I mean? although you didn't so get a picture say it. because exactly. of your work ethic. Yeah. your picture that you take with these people that are in those positions can take them a long ways. And, and they right. know that too. That's they why know that. they that's why I brought it up. Yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? Exactly. Because your power is in your brand, and people look at you and they like, I get around that. I get around that nigga. I'm gonna get my thirty more votes. Come on, come on. Come on, and that's, that's, yeah. those are the facts. Those are the facts. <laughs> but the issue is, is that at least we done talked to him. There you go. Okay, we had that conversation. He knows what we expect from him. I mean, so the question is, when Trump got in the office, did anybody talk to Trump and let him know what we needed or what we was trying to do? Yeah, uh, Ice Cube. Yeah, exactly. He, but it wasn't many people that got that talked to him. They was all running, and 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 I remember Kanye and Steve. Yeah, yeah Steve. I remember some yeah. stuff, but. Yeah. But now he, he's back and he exactly. got some tennis shoes. Exactly. And it's going down. <laughs> <laughs> he got some gold dunks and he's doing his go. thing. Yeah. He back. Yeah. I don't know, like I said, as far as for me, I don't really know what. It's hard for me to see the needle moving, regardless mm -hmm. of how we look at it. Yeah. I look at everybody and I'd be like, man, what's going to be the change in four years? Is this yeah. going to help us? Is it, is it going to hurt us? Does it really move the needle? You know yeah, what I mean? And see, with that being said in the same breath, that's why I go back to education. Yeah. Because the real governing force in my life has been my education. It ain't really been the government. There you go. Per se. It was my education to know how to get money, what to do with money. Now, if the government came through and said, okay, here go PPP, okay, here go EIDL, okay, here go small business loans and grants and stuff like that, we'll take advantage of all of that different stuff as it comes. But for the most part, we got to be self-sufficient in our daily lives and routines. And at the end of the day, how many people do you know have really received you know, that trickle down effect from the powers that be. But even with education, it helps when you do get all of that to know how to invest in and use that, spend that money correctly right. and not just go out here in one go and just, you know, waste it. Exactly, exactly. But that's that's the part of the education of it all because mm -hmm. you got to know exactly what you're going to do with the money when you do see it. Are you going to reinvest into your business? Are you going to open up another business? Are you going to spread it out? Are you, uh, you going to put it in... Uh, Bitcoin or some of these uh, digital currencies. What are you going to do with that money once you get it? And like I said, at the end of the day, 
I don't really see where any of their policies have touched down to the masses on the regular basis to change what I got to do every day. Come on, that's why I was at with it earlier. I'm saying what I got to do every day. I got to get up and go to work and make these ducats, nigga. I, I don't got time to be worried about the politics. This nigga say ducats. Else. Exactly. Nigga say ducats. You know damn well. Exactly. We, we Come on, on. ducats, lumber. <laughs> you got to go get. It. You see what I'm saying? I mean, the only time that it did get crazy, though, and I will say, so this is when, so you want to know what I talked to Robert F. Kennedy mm -hmm. about when we get in there? First of all, one of my main things is homelessness. Yeah. What are we doing yeah. to make That's sure that everybody right. has a home? Yeah, now it's real in the field. It's bad so, everywhere. It ain't I know, just but certain here. places like California, certain places, yeah. California here, especially Dallas, when you think guy. about, Dallas has it bad too, but when you think about, especially downtown areas, yeah. I'm like, you shouldn't be, you, too many businesses here, too many tourists come here. You shouldn't be seeing that. Years and years ago when I was pregnant, and so my daughter is, what, uh, 18, 18 now. I remember coming, and right here where you have the waterfalls, yeah. I never saw homeless people there back Yeah. 18 years ago. Yeah. Now, every single time when we come and we stay downtown, it's, it's like down. you don't even want to go over there and take pictures because all these homeless people are there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, so I'm like, pictures, what the world? Take pictures with them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, nigga, that way, bro, you got to make it, make it work. Yeah. I, I feel you on that as well. And that was one of my main concerns that I was telling uh, Bobby about. I was like, look here, man, what are we going to do about homelessness? And that's one part of it, but then also just making housing affordable for everybody, the people that are working two and three jobs to try to make sure that they can take care of their family and stuff like that. They still can't afford to have a place to live. Then the other part was I did ask them about the mandates. I said, now, I lost two jobs because I wouldn't get a jab. What would y'all do if something like this was to happen again? But yeah. I have to be on the cutting block again yeah. because I don't want to get a jab? Or are we going to say, you know what? Your body, your right, your choice. Yeah, yeah. You see what I'm so saying? You trying so, to figure out what they're gonna do with exactly. something that's happened? Because they could have them again. Oh no, it, it is biological warfare. They did it once. It worked. It can work. Again. They can scare you up and do make you do whatever. I, I want to go back to KLC. Yeah. And KL and uh, Master P and all those guys, man. They they tour now. Yeah. Right? yeah. They they back on it again. Yeah, they coming to Dallas. Yeah, I know it's it. Hard. But just like KL, like. And uh, um, it was uh, Moby Dick. Moby Dick. He just left the show a while, yeah. but I enjoy yeah. him, man. Moby. Man, yeah. like, like their movement and what it meant to you being in the South and seeing them come up like they did. I always want to, you know, talk about the ones who, like I said, they may not be on the top of the list of, yeah. up on the East and West Coast, yeah. but on in the South, this list we hold them on. on. They can't be nothing but one or two exactly. or three. We got exactly. our own list and our own region, as my boy Gibbs right. say. You know, Damn this is right. our region, Come and on. we got to make sure we treat it as such. So, oh, what do you think about uh, No Limit and Man. they and they run and they drive? Well, see, with No Limit. No Limit and Cash Money, those is two of the greatest labels that ever come out of the South and in hip-hop, period. Wow. So, you know, I was just talking to Turk about this the other day. I said, hey, man, if you really look at the game, if you say, okay, what label dominated for a short period of time but dominated and nobody could fuck with them? That's No Limit. Mm. That year they put out them damn 20 albums. Nobody could do anything with No Limit that year. They were the greatest thing in hip-hop. Mm -hmm. Then you say, okay, what label lasted the damn longest? Cash money to young money. Mm -hmm. yeah, that yeah. label lasted, it all Longer lasted every everybody. other dog on the in the game. So between Baby and Master P, you got to say, those is two of the biggest mm -hmm. doggone label heads that hip hop has ever seen. Has yeah. ever seen. Nobody yeah. has done what they did. When it comes to Beats by the Pound, you know, that was one of the things too early on in my career, though, E. I was reaching out to the OGs, not only because I respected them and loved their music, but I would gain wisdom from them as well. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So one of the things that, and this is on a tangent, but this is one of the things that the OGs would tell me. I, when I had my office, where I still got my office, where I'm at right now, I'd be in the office, I'd be talking to them, I'd be like, hey man, what is it that I need to do? Should I go and sign that deal? Should I go and do this or should I do that? And they all look at me and say the same thing. They'd be like, well, B. Look like you're doing pretty good to me. Uh, I wouldn't sign. I stay independent. Mm -hmm. And then I think about it. I'm like, man, ain't that supposed to be the goal to hook up with a major or something <laughs> like that? They're like, no, man, just stay independent and keep on getting your money and do what you want to do. That's right. So, I mean, that was the beauty of it all, too, when I got a chance to talk to them kind of folks. But when it comes to Moby Dick 
and KL and beats by the pound. I mean, them boys are geniuses, man. In the yeah. South, it ain't getting no better than them, man. That that beats by the pound brand. Yeah. That yeah. brand. You yeah. knew yeah. when it came from the pound or when it came from medicine, man, it was about to go the fuck down it in this down. thing. Yeah. And when I say that they had a chokehold on the game, it's kind of crazy when you look at life because if you were to be sitting right here and then you rewind it back to 97, that's all you're going to hear riding down the that's street. That's right. That's right. It's their music. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? And so that's... What we have to do as podcasters, we got to capture those times mm -hmm. and upload them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, that time wasn't uploaded. That's real. Nobody knows of that time. A hundred years from now, if we don't upload it and talk about it, nobody know that shit happened. Man. It'll be an old wives' tale. Man, you. It'll be a myth. You right. Just like with Freak Nick. When I try to explain to folks what Freak Nick was back in the day, it sounds like a myth or right. a legend. Right. Nobody will believe that it was literally as crazy as everybody's making it out to be. Mm -hmm. But now we got the documentary coming soon that'll break it all the way break down. It all the way down. So when you talk about Beast by the Pound, and you say, man, them folks was dropping albums, two albums a month for a whole year, and all of them were going gold and platinum, and they was outselling everybody, and they had the craziest movement in the game. That's real life. We yeah. have to document that. We got to celebrate that. And we got to let folks know that it has been done and it can be done again. See, that's the other part about history that folks don't understand. When it comes to history, a lot of times you got to know, you got to have that point of reference. If you don't have a point of reference to what's really real, then how do you even know where you're going to go? If you ain't never seen black folks organize and do stuff together, then will you think that it can be done? Mm -hmm. If you sitting over here in the middle of Atlanta, you saw Martin Luther King, Ralph David Abernathy, Hosea Williams, and everybody else that was a part of the civil rights movement working together, then you know that, oh man, you can bring 10 folks together and have a powerful movement. Then you get the Dungeon Family, right. which is another 10 folks together. <laughs> Moving the culture forward. Exactly. So that's what it's all about. It's just about getting people together and doing that. But then once again, Beast by the Pound, that was another group of people coming together and moving the culture forward. No Limit, it was one of the biggest labels at the time. And I mean, you know, they did their damn thing. You didn't get no better than No Limit. I was a big ass No Limit fan, Cash Money fan. I mean, everything in the South, I loved it all. Yeah. So when it comes yeah, me to, too. Um, so you never wanted to rap. At all, because yeah. I feel like every black kid wanted to rap at one time yeah, or the yeah. other. I ain't gonna lie to you, I could. Yeah, and I, and I was damn good. No, I'm saying like, like, like I, mean, I, I really freestyle. I didn't really just. I was in the car with man. Oh yeah, now, I was at the lunch tables. You was tables. at the studio. I was at the lunch tables in school, rapping my that. ass off. You was on it. Oh yeah, now it's it's for those floating. They got so why you didn't? So why you didn't try to pursue? I didn't have no money and I didn't have no network. And that was part of the thing, reason why I created the platform that I created, because I remember thinking to myself, if I would have had me back then, I would have been on the goddamn radio. <laughs> so I said, you know what, let me be what I wished I was for the next generation coming up. And that's what that was. But no, all of us was rapping back in them days, man, but we just didn't have no money or no opportunity. It wasn't on internet and stuff like we got today. And uh, I just took that same hunger and I applied it to my radio career and said, you know what, I'm going to be for these kids what I didn't have for myself. So when you look at though, um, podcasting versus radio, cause you've been in both. both. Mm -hmm. um, what are the advantages and disadvantages of each? Well, and which one do you like better? Of course you're still in podcasting oh, now, yeah. but yeah, you know. But nah, personally, I'm gonna say that And the what same. it does for the culture. Yeah, I'm gonna say they're the same thing. Wow. Podcasting and radio is the same thing. Cause see, guess what, boss talk, Y'all syndicated. Y'all a syndicated wow. radio show. Why? Because I ain't never been to Dallas, but I damn sure know who both y'all is. <laughs> it's the same damn thing. It's the same thing. It really is. You see what is. I'm saying? Yeah. So your ratings are how many people are viewing and watching. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? The yeah. difference is we can actually quantify what the hell's going on by looking at those numbers. On the radio, you can't really quantify it unless you got one of those scanners or you in the management offices to see how many people really listen to this show yeah, today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So the difference between radio and podcast and what I used to love about radio was being able to add the music to the interview. That is right there. Because I would get on this radio and I would turn this damn city the fuck out. Okay. Nigga. I, I, so imagine I'm on High 107 now and I just interviewed Player Fly. And I'm running Player Fly on the radio down here at Hot 107.9 on my show saying that this is what we own tonight. This is just how I feel. 
You see what I'm saying? Tila, he coming to this uh, city. We running Tila tonight on the radio. So it was like I could set a vibe for the whole city at right. the same time along with the interview and the content. Now, with the podcasting, the thing about the radio is once you cut off the radio or you cut off your mic, the show die. Mm. So that was the other part. They, see, I came up in a time in radio you can get on the radio and have a damn good ass show and then you go home and everybody that day saying, man, I, I heard Beehive on the radio today. He had a good ass show and what you got for us today. But with podcasting, you have a good ass show. That thing gonna live forever. That's mm -hmm. real. And so that's why I had to integrate that into my radio show because I'm like, man, I'm in here making movies in this thing. I need to be that able to be. make this shit live forever. I can't that's just be real. sitting over here making this movie on the radio and not giving these people something that they can take home with them. Right. So, I always like that, but uh, podcasting, it still has the same impact. The thing is that I like about podcasting is that uh, everybody can do it. Man, everybody You see can what I'm saying? It, everybody can do it. I used to tell my students, I laugh because I was talking to one of my students the other day, and he was like, Professor Hightower used to, used to tell us all the time it was going to be more podcasters than rappers. And we'd be sitting in that class looking wow. at you crazy as hell. But I knew this shit about 10 years ago. I said, yeah. man, once I started cranking this shit up, I said, oh, everybody's going to do this. Because I knew I was a regular nigga. Yeah. So I'm like, nigga, if all you need is a camera and some mics, it's going to be going down <laughs> across the country. Yeah. But everybody do it be high, but it don't hit for everybody. It's some that try, and but... A lot of it, and they don't understand, I'm going to give them the game. A lot of it because the passion and the consistency is there. Exactly. exactly. If, exactly. The, if the passion and the consistency was there, it would, it would go hard. But they do it, but they don't really believe it. Well, see, the thing is, is that you, this is a passion project. You got to love it. Like you got to love it. We used to talk about that time at Hot 1079. Imagine me uploading all this stuff to YouTube and I ain't making no money because I don't know how to make no damn money, but I'm paying for somebody to edit and shoot my shit every day mm -hmm. and I ain't That's making nothing down 12, 15 an hour. Yeah. So I done paid my cameraman more than I done got paid working <laughs> at the station just to shoot a damn interview. That's a damn I did a nigga that come in there, he ungrateful than the motherfucker. I done took my last party <laughs> to shoot his ass to upload and help promote him. And I'm in that bitch looking crazy as Man hell. hell. You see what I'm saying? So y'all done triggered me. I don't know why I got, I done got uncomfortable. It done triggered me. But I say that to say I knew the future of it was going to be everybody was going to have it. And it's another way that this thing is about to go from here that it's about to go and and uh, that's going to be the content part of it all. Yeah, because yeah. after a while, what's happening, you got the convergence of all of these different technologies going into this damn phone right here. That's right. right. That's so right. we watching our movies, listening to our music, right. we're getting our news, we're talking on this thing, and everything we get is right here. So we listening to the radio, we streaming apps right. from here everything. and everything else. So the question is, what are you putting on this phone? If, if a nigga going to be on this thing, it's just like crap. If they're going to use it, then you need to be the one giving it to them. That's it. And I hate to say it like that and use that comparison. No, that's the truth. But somebody's going to give folks this content. Anyway. So why, about, why, why not you? Why not yeah. you? Yeah. Now the question is, though, what kind of content are you going to give That's them? the exact, because when we ask people that question, mm -hmm. at first some people was like, oh, I can't stand podcasts. They're so messy. They're so oh, they this. talk too Comparing much. To, and these are people who are not in the business, but are the consumer of the business. And the difference is that it would say with the radio, because the radio, you can't say certain things on the radio. Yep. You can't just come out and ask certain questions. Yep. They already know, like when celebrities and stuff come on the radio, they, they, they're going to get generic Questions see, so that's say. because the personality ain't working. So the whole thing is, you got people like Wendy Williams. Mm -hmm. She wasn't doing that. Mm -mm. She was in there laying a smackdown. Charlemagne put his damn life on the line for the game. Okay, exactly. he was in there laying a smack. Can I get a drop? Uh -huh. You see what Can I'm I saying? Can I get a drop, brother? <laughs> you see what I'm like, saying? I mean, nigga, you better not say the wrong thing. Come on, man. This man done put his life on the line for radio to entertain folks. Yeah, literally. Yeah. He was a big. So that's what separates the good from the great. Right. How far are you willing to go to get your message and your point across? So you got those kind of people that put it down, and then everybody else, it becomes a job. See, what people don't know about radio is, when you do an interview at a radio station, that's a work day. Yeah. That means I had to come to work today. Mm. If I ain't got no interview, that means I'm only working five minutes an hour. Yeah. What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? Is your boy B. High nigga tonight? We at the club. That's this right. Going that's on. right. See you back in a minute with Smoke 2117. That was me working for that quick little second right there. You see what I'm saying? So with that being said, radio, a lot of people don't feel like working. 
Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? You have to really be able to work. So that's what that's what allowed my brand to grow because wasn't nobody trying to work and do the work that I was doing. I was trying to interview people. I was trying to document history. I was trying to get my story out there, get other people's story out there, and create a mood and a vibe and an atmosphere in this city to where more people could thrive too because I'm more of an inclusive person. I'm not exclusive at all. I don't do the exclusivity shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do the inclusive shit. Yeah. I want everybody to be included. Why? Because I was excluded from a bunch of shit my day. Come on self. now. Come on now. You see what I'm saying? So I wasn't going to take that to the game. Like, man, these motherfuckers done tried to exclude me from everything, so I'm going to exclude everybody else. No, y'all did that. We're going to reverse it, and I'm going to make it cool to include people. But that's another part of who you are is positive and trying to help people come together and mm. I think that's that's a part of your character well see the thing is if you know what you're doing then you ain't got to be scared of nothing that's real you see what I'm saying ain't nobody gonna come in here and shake me up and I'll be like oh Lord what's going on you know these new folks that came over and took over the podcast and came what am I gonna do now I'm gonna be here right along with you listen man <laughs> you going nowhere you mentioned uh, Charlemagne well, I'm a big fan of Charlemagne yeah. I, and I wasn't at first it was he was cool at first yeah. but to see his transition mm. is what but made me more the best. it made me a more of a fan when I seen the way he came through all of those avenues yeah. and he still stood strong and not only is he the best but he got better with time exactly as i watched him i became a fan because i seen how much he grew you know what i mean there's certain people in the game that i just flat out respect and it's simply because they can dish it but they can take it just as well as they dish it you see what i'm saying yeah charlamagne is one of those people Mm -hmm. he could dish that shit out there yeah. But if you brought it back to him, he could take it just as good as he showed that's, it out that's there. That's real. That's you real. You know, another one of them, Alley Boy. Alley Boy could dish that Alley shit Boy, out there, yeah, yeah. but he could take it just as good as they bring it back to him. He's like, well, hell, I'm still here. I don't give a fuck. You yeah, know what I'm yeah. saying? I respect those kind of people because that's real life right there. It's one thing to be able to bully, 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 and it be one-sided. But it's another thing when they come back on you, you got to stand there and be like, no, nah, I'm still here. I ain't gone nowhere, and I took it just, to, just as well as I gave it. I, I, another another thing, eighty five South down here, yeah, yeah, and them boys, they hey, they serious to going out there. They a new dynamic. People ain't never seen nothing like that. Exactly. Before. Same thing I told Country Wayne. Shout out Country Wayne. I was like, look, nigga, ain't nobody never seen what you're doing before. Mm-hmm. So you exactly. can't expect you look like an alien down here to regular humans, <laughs> nigga. So you can't expect niggas not to talk about you yeah. and say stuff about yeah. you because they don't know what this is. They like it and they don't know what it is. What you're seeing is success. Exactly. That, but that's just, what it is. Country Wayne, he's successful at what he's doing. But, he his method, of, but his method of how he go about getting to the success is unusual to people, just like you're doing a math problem. But a math problem, people know that this is how you get to X, Y, Z, you get this way. But then you come in and you're so different, it's like, oh, I'm going to get this same result. <laughs> I go to Z, I'm gonna, you can get to him, nigga. Right. Because <laughs> a lot of people had to go the old way, but Country Wayne figured it out. And well, it's, you, it's the same thing that we're doing. Yeah. It's just content. And exactly. I think you spoke on it earlier. Exactly. Best, like the content has become that's that's going to be the driving factor going mm-hmm. forward too exactly. the visuals the audio and all that because at the end of the day you got to give folks something to see yeah. folks they need something to see every day they looking for something to see so mm-hmm. why not be your content that you and they on this thing doing. right here they on their phone 24 7 man so that that's one of the main things too see with me i want to use my platform to educate entertain and inform at the same time so now where i'm going with it now i'm about to educate folks through the platform and i'm about to entertain them at the same time too the beauty of being independent is that you can do it your way you wake up you know you say nigga i'm coming down here to atlanta i'm about to lay the smack down that's how i feel today <laughs> Mm. Yeah, nobody yeah. sent you down nobody, yeah, nobody told you to come uh-uh, down I'm pulling yeah. up. nigga you pulling up and doing what the fuck you want to do and that's boss talk <laughs> hey man <laughs> what, what I'm saying that's boss talk that's, <laughs> talk. that's what you're man. Yeah. come on man come on <laughs> that's it come right. on you see what I'm saying <laughs> pull up I, exactly. I don't have you nobody doing telling what the fuck us you what to do. to do and that's it so Freedom. this is the thing that people don't understand though boss talk is that independent label out of Dallas that's real from the 90s it's the same thing. Yeah, yeah. It's the same thing. The history, if you understand the history, it's, it's going to repeat just, itself. It's re- really so guess gonna... what? We're going to have a lot of folks doing content out the trunk. Mm-hmm. We're going to be independent doing our thing, but guess what? Two short with rich as fuck. Woo! Snumped up with rich, rich as fuck. As... Woo! You see what I'm rich. saying? These boys was doing it independently, getting rich as rich fuck. As fuck. Yeah. So that's the whole thing. Once you understand the game and actually how the hell to put the content out, how to monetize the content, 
you will be good standing alone from people because you ain't got the answer to no. Let me ask you this: when because uh, I'm a big Kiki fan as well, and yeah. here on the show, um, what I love about Kiki is in this independent world. Mm -hmm. For me, he's one of those guys that knew how. He knows how to roll out his projects and make it look like a label is behind him. Exactly. Who have you seen that's like that that's down in these areas that when they throw when they lay a project out, you be mm -hmm. like, dang, them boys, they know how to roll out a project. Uh Big O. They used to do it back in the day. They still get busy to this day, but that's DJ Monte, Baby D, DJ Jelly, MC Assault, that whole crew. Uh, the affiliates, they laid the smack down as far as rollouts. I mean, hell, you know. I ain't gonna lie, that damn DJ Drama new album when he redid Juice. Yeah, I said, "Oh my god, oh my god, yo, yo. oh my!" When I saw that, I said, first of all, I know Drum. That was a dream. He was living a dream and also putting together an immaculate piece of content at the same damn time. Yeah, yeah. For him to be a DJ and say, "Okay, DJ inspired me." Okay, and I watched Juice and seeing Q on Juice inspired made me want to become a DJ. Then you fast forward 25 years later, 30 years later, you the biggest DJ ever, and you are reenacting that scene from Juice, and you get to play Tupac role. That's hard. <laughs> Come on, man. So it's like that content was marketing, but it was also they could monetize that content at the same time, and it was a hard-ass rollout. Oh, uh, let me see who else put it down when it comes to the marketing. That roll out is hell. Yeah. You got to have it because a lot of times being independent, some people fall by the wayside and yeah. they don't know how to put it out. If we don't, yeah. we it, it people struggle with different things. Well, and see, you got, got people, some creative. people can't understand how to roll it out and can wrap their ass off. Well, see, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah no, I, I'm with you, I'm with you. Because see, I'm going to tell you a digital rollout that I saw that put somebody on my radar, but this was damn near 10 years ago, but it was Rich Homie Quan. He kept on showing up on my timeline. Yeah. And I was like, who the fuck is this Rich Homie, Homie Quan? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a crazy name. Where, where he come from? But then I go into a room and they be like, man, have you heard about Rich Homie Quan? You heard of Rich Homie Quan? He hard. Then my brother called me on the phone like, man, nigga, it's some nigga named Rich Homie Quan going crazy. He's going in. Then I'm like, hey, man, we need to get this nigga to the radio station yeah, because yeah. obviously he's about to be the next yeah. one. So I, I mean, wait, nigga. that digital marketing, the game has already changed, man. Folks just got to get on their digital marketing and then also they got to understand that it's okay to be organic with what the hell's going on. You know, everybody wants to have these major massive numbers and stuff like that, but I'm going to put it to you like this. Can you fit a thousand people in this room right here? Ugh. Well, that's a lot of motherfuckers. So if you got a thousand people watch something, that means a lot of niggas. That's a lot of niggas. And, that's the, that, and it's real bodies. You yeah. see what I'm saying? If 10,000 folks don't watch some shit, that means you just packed out an arena. 20,000 right. folks uh, watch it, you done packed out a stadium. Same thing. We're talking man. about real bodies, real eyes, realizing what the hell's going on. So that's always the other part. So people are kind of scared of letting folks see them grow. Mm -hmm. But to this day, if I drop something and it don't do a whole bunch of people, I don't give a damn. It just is what it is. It just is You're going to get what we get. But yeah, even but with, in the age of content, what we've realized, even if you drop something right now, you don't do a lot of views, in the next four months, that same one... You look back at it and be like, what the hell exactly. happened? You can't go off and you're like, hold exactly. on, who shared it? What exactly. happened? Who said something oh, about one something One share will happened. change everything, too. From one the right share. person. Right. Yeah, one right. share. From the right person. Come on, come I'm on. I'm going to go back to the, uh, <laughs> the music, right, right quick, yeah. about it, uh, just the way you were saying about the digital. Digital is cool, but... You, like uh, 3D 9T was here yesterday and she mm -hmm. had a wrist band, a wrist thing on. They had all of her music and her, all of her, uh, and she sell it for, and she probably bring me one back. Yeah, That's she sell it for like $100. She yeah, started but it's $100, everything but she ever did. Like, videos, everything. I yeah. think getting creative. I seen Al D 300, mm -hmm. you know, uh, he one of our guys in Texas, man. Mm -hmm. He taken, he, when I, when he first come home from prison, did like, Man, fifteen or twenty albums so yeah. quick it'll scare you. Yeah. And he was he was giving them out on a flash drive, and then Kiki pulled him up on the digital. Mm. But he doing both. You gotta be. Is there a balance in there? Can you still do the the you know the tangible thing yeah. and the digital thing and be successful? Yeah, now you can still do it. The whole thing is it's the product, man. That yeah. product got to be good too. It got to be good. A lot of folks put a lot of money behind some bullshit. <laughs> You see what I'm saying? I've seen that before. Yeah, yeah. It's like, man, you got all that money, man, but it's some BS that you're trying to put out here, so that ain't going to work. Go. No. So if you got some buy, a little marketing strategy, mm -hmm. and a little bit of money, you can grow that thing. And then also, you know, sometimes you got to let it ride for 
six months to a year. You got to really stay down with your dream and your vision. Like I said, man, when I started my YouTube, I was at 250 subscribers and well, nobody watch. I was doing 50 views just like everybody else. And I had to stay down. It wasn't until damn near 10 years in that I figured out how to really crank the shit the hell up. Glad you said that. What was your most viral, viral video? Or do yeah. you even know? Bun. <laughs> Bun, that's yeah. what. That's how you got me. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly. Yeah, Bun came in that thing and broke the dead. Bun hit a million views on my page, and he done probably did like uh, all together probably another fifty million views on just other pages, just ripping it down. Yeah. And, uh, running with his content, but that was probably one of the most viral ones when he was just talking about rich and famous and Jay-Z and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Yeah. What is real wealth and what is not. That thing went crazy as hell. Wow, that's that's crazy exciting. Mm -hmm. I gotta ask, so um, in doing the podcast, and what do you think is your biggest challenge um, with coming up in the podcast game, and how did you overcome it? Uh, getting those eyes on what you're doing. That's the biggest challenge, getting the damn attention. But it's ways around that. So, you know. Yeah, how did you do it? Yeah, so one of the things that you do is. You need to uh, get up to give up the game. I mean. Well, no, I'm about to give up the whole game. I'm a professor first. Up. I'm a professor first in the podcast a second. So I'll give up the whole game. I'll tell you, I'll play that shit. Because the bottom line is, who gonna, how we going to grow and how we going to know? Gonna grow yeah. if you don't know. So, but I did. I would get my content placed on different websites. So All Hip Hop, that was one of the earlier uh, websites that I used to partner with, a guy named Steve Rays. Okay. He was working over there at All Hip Hop, and that was when I was at the uh, radio station as well, and I would send them content. I'd be like, hey, man, I do content out of Atlanta. Would you post this for me on y'all website? So then they would start posting it on uh, allhiphop.com. Uh, Vlad, he posted some of my Vlad stuff earlier. Yeah, stuff. no, Vlad helped me out earlier wow. on in the career. So that's why I ain't mad as hell at Vlad. Well, you, like know, we, you know, we be going in on yeah. Vlad. Yeah. No, yeah. No, not me, but like. Well, now the I, culture. But I don't agree with everything that Vlad I don't need either. But, but, I don't, but I do know what he has benefited he the culture. You. But then also, you know, see, the difference between Vlad and everybody else is Vlad is going to get his money. Yeah, he's thinking bottom line. He don't give a mm -hmm. damn. That's just the bottom line. He like, where's my money? How's this gonna <laughs> generate money? If it generates me some money, nigga, we gonna run with it. And yeah. that's just what it is. And that's why everybody's pissed with Vlad because we have codes. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. we know that some you stuff ain't supposed codes. to come out. Is that he ain't going by them codes? Oh, you, you know. Pee Wee Longway, he did it the best. When Pee Wee went on there, oh, yeah, 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 they yeah. tried to ask Pee Wee, and Pee Wee said, man, I ain't about to incriminate myself on here. I ain't about to do all that stuff. Yeah. And uh, when he said, and then Vlad said, well, that's how he's supposed to answer. Yeah. So <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Yeah. He said, I would have got all your criminal information if you would have told me that. But since you said you don't want to talk about it, I respect that. That's, and that's how you answer those kind of questions. Mm -hmm. That's real. So with me, you can come on my show and give me all your criminal information, but I ain't putting it out. No, no. I'm going to delete that shit. I'm like, no, nah, oh. man, you don't want that coming out, bro. You ain't, no, nah, nah, we man, ain't doing that. I don't call, I, I got people I done did that for that still fighting case, be there talking. Exactly. I was like, man. You can't put that out, nigga. I ain't doing that. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, yeah, no, but you put them on the different websites. Mm. You get those people to share. Yeah. So, in this day and age, but back then, it was blogs and websites. So, now, you might come out better getting, you know, you got to get the Instagram pages to share it. You see mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Whether it be a neighborhood talk or a spot on or a shade room or something like that. Hip Hop DX and uh, different websites, uh, Complex getting all of them on traps and trunks, dirty glove bastard. See, they get a uh, ATL top 20. They'll get a hold of your podcast and ship it out there to the people that they got actively uh, following them right now. And then that'll help it grow as uh, See, we never time. really reached out to nobody to share our stuff. It just happens. Like if oh, yeah. something go, go viral or certain per person to share it, then they start picking it up exactly. and sharing it. Exactly. And sometimes it, I'll be wondering because I'll get DMs and be like, hey, send me this content. I'll share it. But then I'm like, to me, sometimes it just looks so spammy. Like, yeah. like what's this? Because I'm asking permission, go ahead, go ahead. but then you have some people who don't even ask permission. They just share it. But I like with they 
Share it, but just tag us. Yeah. Put it in there. This yeah, is where you get it from. Keep it real with me. But some people be stealing your content, oh, no, and putting it up it. there, and don't even say where it's from. Exactly. No, they they definitely run with that content. And see, when it comes to that content, that's why you got to watermark that thing. But then when they get to zoom, you in, see behind you, right? Oh, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Nigga, exactly. I'm gonna get you. Exactly. Yeah, I had to go get that. I don't blame like, that. I don't blame that. Now, I gotta they gotta don't have... run off on the plug every time with that stuff. <laughs> I got a lot of viral content out there that my face name ain't nothing. Yeah. Right and they just uh, put it out there but you know when it comes to this content game that distribution is imperative but this was the point I was about to make good content don't care what platform it's on mm -hmm. that bitch gonna real. blast that's off that's real it's gonna go mm -hmm. good content gonna blast off regardless see I, and I learned that first thing so it'd be like okay I sent something to all hip hop then it'll blast off on their platform because they get my good content. I'll send something to Vlad, it'll blast off on his platform because he's getting my good content. Then one day I said, you know what, let me just keep it on my platform and see what the hell it do. And it blasted off. Wow. And that's when yeah. I realized, I said, oh, now nah, good content is going to do numbers regardless yeah. of where it lands. Well, I, I, you remember when I had Pimp and Ken on there and him yep. and Bobo, I put them on there purposely together because yep. they both say they know PMC. We're going to find out today. That's right. And then the, the sex tape thing came out. Mm. And when it did, it went negative and all kind of positive, negative, mm. everywhere. And, and Ken never did even reiterate on what it was or what it was even pertaining mm -hmm. to. But people, things will grow legs and it yeah, just start yeah. to go. And I looked up and this story, it's like if you when we were young and you say something in the class and oh, the telephone. You, you go down, it goes around and yeah. by the time you get to the other side of the class, it's, yeah. totally, different. it's totally different. Exactly. So that's what happened with that. But then when you came back and brought him on your show mm -hmm. and he still was trying to further clear it up, yeah, it was like, damn, like, man, you know, this, this is power in this media stuff, man. It's crazy power. It's a whole lot of power in there, man. And I mean, you'll realize that once you start when the platform starts to grow and folks start getting pissed off on something that was said on your platform, mm -hmm. that's when you realize the power was there. And yeah. then that's when you have to really pay attention to everything that's coming off the platform and mm -hmm. then evaluate whether you want to deal with the headache that come along with it too. Correct. Because also sometimes you ain't got to say the shit, but they said it on your show. I and and I they get mad at you about that yeah. because I they said it. it. Yeah. And, and yeah. I'll be like, why are you mad at me? I ain't yeah. the one that said it. But I tell them also, I said, put up this disclaimer. Put up this this. I don't be yeah. doing that or something. I just put it in my comments or something. But yeah. it, it, it's, it's a lot of these views. A Niggas lot of need somebody to blame. Correct. Right. They looking for they somebody need to blame. Somebody to blame, and they gonna blame your ass every, every time. time. So you go into the game knowing that before you talk oh, to you these talk folks, to that these I'm gonna get blamed for what the hell comes off this camera. So let me try to make sure that it's is uh, clean as possible. What What do you think about the views a lot of time when the people are buying bots or they, or yeah. so, or have you ever interviewed somebody and you look back at them and you like, I don't know how that number went up like that and it'd be something to where you look at it but about 10 comments and you like, something fishy with this. When it comes it, to those bots, see this is the thing about the bot game. If you want to play the bot game, you ain't going to last long. That's right. Mm -hmm. Because you ain't going to make no money. That's right. Because the content ain't never really got that good. Because you keep on buying the damn bots you trying to instead of figuring out why your content ain't doing them numbers organically. See, that's the whole purpose of doing the fucked up numbers so you can find out what works and what don't that's work. That's right. That's right. And once you figure out what works, you say, okay, we're going to continue to do this more and continue mm. to grow organically. But right. if you buying them damn bots, also, you, you ain't making tell. no money because the money that you are making off of monetizing your content, you're buying it and trying to make it look sweeter than what it really what is. What it really is. Now, it depends on what your business model is as well. Yeah. Okay? Now, if you're selling your content as a product and you're not monetizing it through, you know, the platforms that it's already on, then you could put the bots on there and then somebody might be trying to sell. Uh, they might want to say, okay, uh, I want to put some water on your show. Well, guess what? If you go on my show with your water and then I do a million views on that motherfucker, if I turn around and say, hey man, the price just went up, you're gonna pay that shit. Yeah, yeah. So that's the part of it too. So even though it might be bots, it's still marketing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's gonna drive the traffic because it's gonna be like, you see, he just did a million damn views. Mm -hmm. So let me go see why the hell he did a million damn views. Mm -hmm. So then it might skate to a million two five yeah 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 so yeah. you done got a quarter million on top of that million but you bought the bots to get it uh get the party started with that so i see that a lot of times me in my case i'm going organically 
I'm yes, not, I'm me not, too. I'm not, That's I'm not, we are. We never, never bought an ad in my exactly. life. Exactly. Now, now, I done bought an ad before because I wanted to see if they work and see what they had I didn't do, because I talked to people like you that said they didn't do nothing. And then I was like, well, I guess I ain't going to mess with it because in my mind, it's like they opening it up a little bit. But what if I did it on my own? It's going to yeah. hit different. Exactly. And it's going to hit a lot more. Come on. So Come that's on. why I didn't ever do Come it. Come on. No, and I don't blame you. I don't blame you. <laughs> Shoot. But I, I have bought some ads in the past just to see exactly what the hell they do. And uh, they put the vanity metrics on there, but it don't really change the game. So it don't mm -hmm. change the game. Yeah. I mean, I need something that if. Well, see, the thing is, what nigga don't understand is the content is the ads. Yeah, the yeah, marketing yeah. is the ads and the revenue at the same time, yeah, yeah. and the product sale. It's all of that in damn one. That's the beauty of content creation, podcasting, and stuff. Now, so it's like okay, if you say you got the interview monetizing on YouTube, you got the clip on Instagram, but you can say this clip brought to you by Alkaline Water. That's monetizing that the same way, but the clip is still marketing the podcast, but it's still making the money as far as. Uh, it's being sold as a product on another social media platform. So I think that works that way uh, as well. But no, nigga, put out that. Like I, I'll tell anybody this, put out that damn content and just keep on putting it out and getting better. And then when you look at them low ass numbers, just figure out how to make better damn views. That's so true, Make man. better content, man. You just gotta make I gotta, I gotta get your top three of okay. all time. That's what we do on here. Okay. Top three dead or alive. Any genre too. It's just okay. wild as hell. Like top three. Okay. Uh, well, here top uh, basketball. That's Joe. no, 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 no. This is rap. This is <laughs> oh, just straight rap. rap. Yeah. Okay, it's top rap. Oh no, it ain't just no. straight rap. Music. 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 Okay, this is top three artists of all time, dead or alive. Any genre. Uh oh, get it straight then. Oh man, this is the most <laughs> difficult question ever asked. Get okay. it straight then. You know, I'm gonna go. I got to go. Andre three racks. Uh, I got to go. Bun B, and I'm gonna go Tupac. Wow, that's a hard, that's, that's a hard, hard top yeah, three. Yeah. I want to ask you about uh, Outkast before you get out of here. You a yeah. big Outkast fan? I love Big Boy. You know, yeah. uh, three thousand. How did you like the last? Uh, the flute album. Yeah, the flute album. You know, the flute I heard Wicked on a mad about. It. Oh yeah, now everybody was mad. pissed off about that damn flute album. That flute album. Pissed, we've been sitting over here waiting on Andre to come back rapping for about thirty years, and then he come in with a damn flute album. Like, come on, Dre, because Dre got that shit. He knows. He has it. that shit. See what happened was. Dre came up in a time to where you couldn't rap as you got older. And he said it in his interview with a young you man. It. He was like, man, I don't want to be no old ass nigga out here rapping. Yeah. But what he don't realize is that the time that he has saw in the future is not that time. Not that they time. They need old niggas to rap now. That's right. So at this time, Killer Mike just showed you, I'm 48 years old and I just got me some Grammys, Dre. Yeah. We went out here. <laughs> what are you doing? Yeah. So I'm hearing rumblings. I'm hearing rumblings that Dre dusting them motherfucking chops off. He about to come back he out. He's gonna come back out. I'm hearing rumblings. I don't know if it's fact or fiction, but uh, fiction. But I done heard some shit saying that Dre got some more in the tank. You, yeah, it's something about being having that insight. A lot of people gonna hit you up and say, "Hey, you that nigga about whatever." Yeah, yeah, you know what that work? Yeah, 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 yeah. I done heard some rumblings. I don't know if it's fact or not though, because Dre don't never push shit out, so you don't no, know. You don't. But know. then in the same breath, Big Boy still been raising hell the whole. He time. always he always does. Yeah, now Big is a mug, man. I mean, Big Boy and Andre, you get them two together, and I mean, it just goes the fuck down. It go down, don't Along it? Along with organized noise and Sleepy Brown, I mean, they whole team, they some of the greatest musicians yeah, and artists yeah. ever put together. Yeah. So it's like when they get together. You know, it's a beautiful thing. We just need more music from CeeLo Green. I mean, one of the greatest singers hard, to ever come out of the damn city. And one of the realest niggas to come out of the city, hard too. With it. You know, CeeLo going to show up for you and help out and show that love and give wow. you that co-sign and help you to get to where the hell you need to go to. Same thing with Gip, the whole goodie. Really, all them boys out of goodie, mom. I love yeah, them because they all down. showed up for me at one point or another in my career as far as helping me to have guests or have content and giving me that co-sign to move my platform forward. But there's a lot of artists the same way like that. And uh, but Cash Dre, that damn flute album, I ain't, you know, I ain't buying that. <laughs> Hey, you hip hop head anyway, nigga. Yeah. Don't try to play yeah. on that. Yeah, exactly, man. You know, Come on, man. Too, man. Check it, Wait, man. Hold on. Where do you think this podcast game is going? Do you think it's going to last for a while? Yeah. Uh, this is the new thing. See, the thing is, what folks don't understand as we speak right now, uh, the economy is changing. It is. You see what I'm saying? Artificial intelligence is about to fuck up the whole game, mm -hmm. and niggas are going to have to find new jobs anyway. 
So this is going to be one of the jobs that somebody chooses to take on. Hell, I'm going to be a content creator because it's going to be a lot more time for people to just absorb content moving into the future. Guess what? If you ain't driving your car because the motherfucker's automated, you're going to be consuming content in your car going to where the hell you need to go. <laughs> so it's going to be a need for more content coming out. Whoever's leading the podcast field right now is going to continue to dominate going into the future. So for me, as a professor, I taught the history of radio as well. So wow. this is another case in time of where history is repeating itself mm -hmm. through digital media. Through digital. So mm -hmm. when we talked about radio in the beginning of radio, nigga, you could get a damn box with a transmitter yep. and we'd be in here. We could get on the radio and broadcast as far as the hell we wanted to. It was free to everybody. Anybody could do it. But then it eventually got regulated. And once it got regulated, that's when the game changed. When I would tell my students that, I said, okay, what do you see out here that's just like radio was when it first started? I said, YouTube. Uh -huh. Everybody can get on YouTube and put on the content, and you can go reach the whole world. It ain't been regulated yet. Uh -huh. I said, when the regulations come in, it's going to get a lot more difficult to put out this damn content. Wow. So you have to get ahead of it and build your platform up before the regulations come in. Right. One of the regulations, you see, you have to have 1,000 subscribers, 4,000 hours of watch time. Oh, that's going to go up higher. That's right. That's going to go up higher. It's going to be a lot more difficult probably in the next five to ten years to get on YouTube and create a platform. Mm. So the whole thing is you want to get on there now, now and be ahead of the game that's so right. that our voices can continue to be, be heard, heard when the, the entry barriers start to change. But when it comes to the future of podcasting and digital media, we have independent record labels. That's the whole point of what we got going on right now. We are what... No Limit was out the trunk. We are what Big Oomp was out the trunk. We are what uh, Screw was out the trunk. We are that now. So we have to find a way to capitalize this and continue to grow our infrastructures and monetize this the best way that we know how so that we can stay independent and continue to bring the content that the people need on a regular basis. That's right. Because some of the shit that you say, somebody needed to hear, That's right. but they would not have heard from any place else because nobody else is talking that shit. That's right. That's right. When I was on the radio, see, that's the difference. See, I was the first nigga to start cussing on radio, too. Really? But I wasn't cussing on the air. I was just cussing said, on, oh, on your mind. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? But nobody was in the room just saying, man, fuck this shit. All these niggas, all they got there. I was the only nigga doing it because I'm like, man, I'm recording this shit. It ain't going to get on the eye. And I can edit it before I put it on the radio. So I'm like, hey, and I was only going to pull out 20 minutes of an hour-long interview and put it on the radio. So I would just get on there and raise hell and keep it moving. Really, man, like, like um, the, the one thing I do know, man, is that when I see you, man, and I understand everything that you, you know, you didn't, you didn't share it with us today, man, a lot of people do want to do what you're doing. A lot of people are going to try to do what we're, what we're doing, but I think it is going to get tighter down the line. But thank God we got in it in time, right? Thank God that it, it, we didn't get to hit with those regulations. But again, Dame Dash He's a guy that says that we're getting screwed on the ads a little bit. Like like the ads are going, you know what I mean? And YouTube is making goo gobs of money on the ads. And we basically just getting crumbs. You know what I mean? Well, it depends on what kind of content you're putting out. Okay. If you're doing numbers, you're making money. And that's For just sure. the bottom damn line. It, it, what, what Dame Dash might say that we're getting screwed, I might say that it's a money problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see what I'm that, saying? It's, it's, it's subjective. Yeah, it's subjective. I look at it as hell. I upload content and money comes out this motherfucker. That's right. That's, that's right. How I see it like a slot, like a slot machine. Exactly. Come on. Into the hit. Exactly. <laughs> Come on, man. Come on. Exactly. <laughs> into the hit. And so, and it's some mathematics behind that too. Two out of ten of your videos gonna hit like that every day. Every time. time. It's gonna be that's two right. out of ten of them. So that's guess right. what, nigga? If you wanna have that money that you're making out of two out of ten of them, that means you gotta put out a hundred videos so you can make sure you get twenty of them bitches a month. Come on now. That hit like that. That hit like that. And then when you making that kind of money, then you like shit, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> you wanna see what I'm saying? 100%. And then also my thing is too, if we want more money, we got to get more money. That's real. You got to sell the product, sell the ads yourself, man, and go out here and be some sales. You can market it's, yourself. Yeah, you can go out and have people hand exactly. out pamphlets. You can go to small business. Come on. You can go and ask them, hey, man, I, I get viewed by 20 million people exactly. a, a month on YouTube Come alone. On. You want to put your product on here? But guess what? That's the same thing that the salesperson doing at the radio station. That's so why, the same why, why you thing. Can't do it? It's the same thing. It's the same thing, thing they're doing at the radio station. Why you can't do it? That's the truth. So guess what? When you do it, now you get more money outside of the monetization. Come on now. And you functioning. This you see what I'm saying? That, that's my whole thing. It's too easy. See, what gets me and 
this is how I feel, man. In the game, you got a lot of folks trying to get money out of corporations. Yeah. And that is a beautiful thing. And I love corporate dollars because they come fast and it's a lot of money at one time. Mm -hmm. However, it ain't all about the corporate dollars. You can get the money your damn self. The corporate money is a lot easier, but you can go out there and build your own infrastructure of sales and getting your money and stuff like that. And niggas just be too tired to go out there and get the real money. <laughs> <laughs> niggas be tired. Niggas be tired. Yeah. Man, thank you so much for coming on the show, man. How can people get a hold of you if they're trying to reach out? Uh, be High ATL, any be social media ATL. platform. It don't matter YouTube, Instagram, uh, TikTok. Uh, be high on Facebook. I'm, I'm on all them up. Man, thank you so much, man. Like thank I said, thank y'all for having me in this. Planet. I'm just happy to, you know, finally meet you and same you know be in the same room. Yeah, and yeah. Be, people always say you got everybody that met you. They always talk good about you. Yeah, okay. I appreciate uh, that. Whoever I appreciate it was that. was telling me you got to link with. I said, I'm not linked with that nigga. <laughs> <laughs> Right, I said, what the hell? He was a DJ. I'm yeah. like, I'm on the street. I come from a different come background. On, I'm being on. real. That's how I be. And they be like, nah, y'all got good injuries. Y'all yeah. the same. I be like, man, I don't know, man. Yeah. That nigga yeah. might not act right. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, know I know what you're talking about. E. And then I, know, I, get, I know what you're talking about. Because everybody say stuff and you don't know. Yeah. You know what I mean? But no, some of these niggas is crazy. Some folks you meet them and you're like, hey, man, you my hero, but I hate your motherfucker. <laughs> but I tell him, I say, you got to talk to these people because you don't ever know how your energy is Go exactly. and coexist yeah. because yeah. you might see this person on social media and they just look like, oh no, I'm not gonna mess yeah. with them. But when you get around a person or talk them, to them, it's totally exactly. different. Totally exactly. different. So, you can't really go by what people say though. You got to get in that room, man. Come on, man. Yeah, yeah. have that conversation. But a lot of our energy do spear out on these podcasts. Yeah, man. yeah. Nigga be like, that nigga really like that. When exactly. nigga, what else you gonna think? Exactly. Like? <laughs> That's the other lesson though, man. When Some, you people yourself, you can exactly. Some people fake and shake. Some people fake and shake. I'm totally myself. I be on here cutting up. Come on. Oh, man. man, I'm telling you, you never know what's going to happen. What you see is what you get. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So man, you know. thank you so much for coming thank on the show, man. Thank y'all for having me in this thing. Man. And I'm pulling up on y'all. You got to come to Dallas. Uh, I, I don't want to hear that shit. I'm come about on. to take a Texas road trip. Come see them. I'm going to holler at y'all and my and, boy and, Donna and Houston. Come on now. And and the, the shout out to Donna on. Houston. I yeah. talked to him on the phone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He another nigga. They be like, man, you need to meet Donna. I'm like, what the hell? We Donna is a real nigga though, man. We all done smoke, but I be like, that nigga's a DJ. You know me. I got to <laughs> I feel you, I feel you, I feel you. I feel you. I ain't thinking about he's spinning the music. I'm riding around listening exactly. to the music. So you just be thing. trying to understand, yeah. man. Yeah. Check it, man. Hey, man, make sure you guys look at the next clips. Be high went off in here. Y'all better make sure y'all check out these next clips because they coming at you right about now. What's up? Check it, man. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101. What a boss is talk. 